Okay, we are online. Are we? Are we? Hello, everyone. Hello to you, Alexander. Hello to you, Alexander. Yeah, hi, everybody. Hi, Meg. Uh, how, how is everybody do doing? How are you doing? Um, is everything fine with everybody? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Um, can you feel us? Is the sink <laughs> all, all right? That was a quote from Rammstein, I think. Um, okay. okay. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Yes, yeah, sync seems seem, seems to be fine. I can I see. I already see the a comments lot here. Comments. Yeah, I can see tons of them already. Well, I hope we will have time to answer all the questions. So tell me, how how, how are you you doing in these strange crazy so, times? So finally, finally, finally better. Finally, finally in Italy, in Italy things, things, seems things seem to be going really, really, better, really better than in previous months. In the previous of, months. Course. of course, we've been one of, we've the, been one of the countries that have been most affected by this coronavirus, coronavirus thing. thing. Uh, so, not only, so not only as a musician, as a musician I've, been I've been suffering this thing, entire thing, but also, but also uh, as a citizen of my country, country we've really, been really, 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 really been struggling, been struggling because of the of the COVID. Uh, uh, and all the restrictions, restriction, the, the lockdowns. I think we had one of the strongest lockdowns, strongest lockdowns actually, actually together with you guys in Russia and, and of course the Chinese, Chinese people. Uh, but, uh, right now, but right now things finally, seems to, finally be seems to be settling. Uh, starting, uh, starting with June, with June the third, we will be able we will to travel uh, in interregional travels, interregional journeys inside our countries. And they said that starting with the fifteenth of June, we will also be able to uh, travel throughout Europe. This is a great relief, especially for me as a member of Visions of Atlantis, because as you may know, uh, most of the band is uh, based in Austria and Clementine comes from France. I am here in Italy, so uh, we couldn't meet. We only, we only have been in touch together uh, online. We couldn't rehearse, we couldn't prepare anything together. Uh, so the idea of finally can get to Austria and <laughs> meet with my bandmates is... Uh, it's just fantastic, and we are actually already uh, planning to to meet after the the fifteenth, uh, at least to stay together. Uh, I guess this was easier for you, also because I've been watching your amazing live show. Thank you so your, much. Your, Thank you. Your fantastic performance. I guess I, I believe you've been one of the first bands uh, that have been performing an online show like that because I've been following Devin Townsend, for example, but he was alone on his, uh, in, in a, his rehearsal room, but you were all together there as a band performing a real show and also a pretty long one because you've been <laughs> playing for more than two hours. And yeah, you, you did something amazing. Do you know it? Thank you so much. You, you, you know, it was actually completely um, unexpected because uh, we just wanted, you, you know, to do something uh, because... Uh, as with with most of the bands, you know, we had our tour cancelled. We were to play a UK tour in April, and of course, we we tried to do it to the maximum. You know, our, they even wrote about us in the Telegraph. You know that this one last band is trying to to get <laughs> to play, but uh, ultimately, the whole thing just our Went, went down. I'm just having some second audio here. I'm trying to understand where is it coming from. I have oh, it's coming from from my phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So we, we you, you know, we're just trying to know to make something positive out of anything that doesn't kill us. You know. So um. We thought, okay, fuck it, but let, let's play anyway. And then there, there was this huge um, preparation because everything was locked down and you cannot move anywhere and you needed those QR codes. You still need, need them to move around. And that there was only one rehearsal place working in the entire city. Thanks so much for, to Calavala Band, you know, for hosting us there. And our... Uh, <laughs> But it worked out well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, I, I think the the entire the look of the show, 
I mean, the performance, of course, but uh, I knew before that you were a good man, so I'm not surprised by the good performance, but I was really surprised about the, the overall look and the preparation of everything because it, it looked... It looks really professional, really amazing, and it was a pleasure to be to be seen. Uh, you know, because when I heard about an online show, the first thought I had is like something in a rehearsal room, or you know, in a uh, at some of your places, or something, or something like this. But actually, you had a real stage with you know the side banners, the lights, and everything, and the impact was really, really, really nice. Uh, I'm really interested in in the online live shows because I believe it's a it's a powerful tool for the bands because if you think about it, we are used to perform in front of uh, a specific crowd coming from a local area where we are. The local area where we are playing, you know. If you play in Munich, you play for the people from Munich. If you play in Rome, you play for the people in Rome. If you play online, you have a, a downside that is the fact that you don't really have a crowd. Or I mean, right now you don't have a crowd because actually you could stream a show with a real crowd in the future, um, but right now we didn't, you didn't. But at the same time, you have a, the upside that you can perform to everyone in this world. And this is why uh, bands like you, like Devin Townsend, like Amorphis, and many other bands uh, had a great reach in terms of uh, feedback coming from, from the people online. And I think this is, this is amazing, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I would say that I would urge all bands to do this show. And by, and by the way, I've just seen Illumishade do also an online show just a few days ago. The band of Fabian, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name correctly, so I won't, but she's a great girl. You know, the singer of Elevetti and... Uh, Illumishade, and they did a great show too, you know, and many other bands, are uh, they do these on online shows, and, and I would actually say that I think, uh, you, you know, that every, every, everybody is complaining about the fact that the record industry has been hit, the music industry has been hit, but I think that um, doing these things, uh, doing these shows, is one of the ways that bands can actually leverage or the situation to their advantage you, you know and actually mm -hmm. and it's good for everybody it's it's a win-win si situation the fans are happy because everybody's tired of, of sitting at home and the bands can earn some money and you know and you know just keep the the whole thing going and what i noticed too um, the most fantastic thing is that people who would have never been able to come to the show, for example, we had a guy in Antarctica, you know, oh. <laughs> on one of the scientific bases watching. So people in places where you would never tour, you know, in your entire life, but you have fans never there. Never say never, but I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, Metallica played there, actually. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the benefit, you know, that you can really go, you cannot go global physically, but you can go global, you know, in the, in the no-sphere, in the informational sphere. So uh, I would say that instead of complaining, it's always a really good idea to think, what can you do in, in the given circumstances, you know, to make everybody as happy as possible, including your, your, yourself. So, yeah, th thanks for, for noticing that. I really appreciate it, especially when it's coming from you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I, I've, I've been following you in the, latest, in the latest years. I've been following the growth of uh, Imperial Age. And what, I, what it's clear to me is that you are a really hardworking man and that you are people that actually always start, try to find a way to improve and to do something better This is clear, I, I believe, for everyone who, who follows your band. Uh, and I think this is also the key for most of the bands to, to achieve something. You are totally right when you say that complaining is just wrong, you know? I, I believe that complaining is just a way for those who doesn't have enough force of will to change things. Because there is always a way when it comes to this kind of... of uh, uh, activity you know when it comes to music there is always a way to do something more to do something better and those who are lazy 
often complain because they don't want to and they don't have enough force of will to do something more. But if you struggle, if you believe in music and if you believe in, uh, in your dream, because, I mean, everything comes from the dream that we all have and we all share, you always can find a way not to complain and to do something because facts, this is what really mean. I completely roger that. I can sign every word. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it on a deal. <laughs> the hard workers deal. <laughs> no, I completely, to totally ag agree with you. I can see that my sound signal is clipping, guys. I will make myself five decibels uh, lower. lower. Yeah, just to make sure that everything is okay. Please yeah. write in the comments if, if it's fine. I've seen, I've seen a cool uh, question from Ingrid Clivers that says maybe an online live stream when you play live for a, uh, live for, with a crowd next time. And also I saw something right in that it's not the same to play online. Uh, I totally agree. But uh, we were talking about, you know, taking the best out of this situation and considering in the, in the future because on the, on the other hand, Alexander was totally right when saying that there are some regions in this world where it is really, really hard to tour. Uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Antarctica, but of course I never really had a chance, and I doubt I will I will have a chance to play in India, for example. Oh, or we should actually organize that. I mean, if a few bands come together, we can actually push that. That would be possible. Yeah, that's that's for sure. But you know, when you plan a tour. Unfortunately, India or South Africa, they are not places that are easy to reach. Um, but imagine the crowd there. Ima yeah, sure. Imagine sure. the crowd there. If we pull, you know, a few bands, go there, and because our not so many bands play there at all, you know, we can have an arena there. <laughs> if the promotion is good. That's for sure, that's for sure. And I think that people would be extremely happy uh, to finally see some of the, of the, I mean, bands from the other countries, you know, because it's not only a problem for European bands, it's also a problem for uh, the bands from the US, from Japan, everywhere. I mean, it's, the farther it is, the harder it is to connect, but the more uh, will to see bands uh, there is in that, in that location. So Absolutely, it, yeah. It, it, Pull it, some uh, locals uh, as well. I would love to play in, in India, you know. And, and stick there for another week to, to see all the temples and all the ancient structures and all that. <laughs> By the way... I know you love history and I know you love culture, so I think it would be a dream place for you. <laughs> One of them. But speaking about the live, our, I know that you have our, a, also a, a DVD Blu-ray coming up. That's totally true. Those who follow Visions of Atlantis perfectly know that during the last Bang Your Head Festival, we've been performing with a real orchestra, and it was uh, a dream really cool, <laughs> coming yeah. through. Because, you know, uh, Clemmy said that during the live show. Uh, there is no symphonic metal without symphony, and there is no real symphony without an orchestra. Absolutely. And performing a show with an orchestra was something that we have been craving for uh, since a lot of time. Uh, especially Thomas, who is the founding member of Visions of Atlantis, the only last founding member in the band. I know that it was his dream to uh, to play with an orchestra, and we finally did it. And this is not the the last show that we will perform with a, with an orchestra, because there are already some shows that we have uh, planned. Uh, once again, with the Bohemian Symphonic Orchestra of Prague, uh, like for example the um, Masters of Rock uh, of 2021. Uh, but yeah, who was there knew that we were recording that show, uh, and finally uh, the mix is over. They are actually uh, finalizing the, the, the video cuts, uh, so we are like on the last uh, moves that we have to, to do to the preparation of the DVD that we'll probably see the light within the end of this year, that's for sure. Hopefully, everything goes as I hope, we will go back uh, on the road because we have a tour that is scheduled for September, and since things are going well pretty much everywhere in Europe, the dream and the hope is that the tour will happen. But I know that also you have a live DVD coming, isn't it? So there yeah. is a, it's not only Atlantis that bounds our beds, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, yes, 
speaking of that live live show, we actually did didn't want to publish it, but I mean everybody started writing, ah, I missed the show, oh I want the recording, I want the DVD, and we said, okay, fine. You know, it's like a landmark event, and we decided to publish it as Blu-ray and DVD. Not sure about the Blu-ray at this point because all factories which print Blu-ray discs are fucked up in Russia completely. So they are gone. They went bankrupt, they closed down. Behind me is actually uh, the mixing, well, the tracks of the uh, of the live show. And Sergey from Arcana, as usual, is doing the mixing. We have one song ready, which is Love Eternal, and we have actually all the footage already cut, and we will publish, I think, half of the concert on YouTube, and who wants the other half can buy the DVD. Okay. Uh, so we will for sure... Um, I, I'm in talks with the video director and producer, you know, and he says that uh, we can definitely start printing the DVDs, you know, as soon as the mix is ready, it will be a two or three DVD full digi pack, you know, with 1080p video, 5.1 sound. And as soon as we find a way to print Blu-ray, we do that. We have had offers uh, from record labels, but we, you know, we thought that at this stage it's not the best choice for us, so we have to print it here, or we have to sell a license to somebody in Europe or or the United States, but then it we lose you know most of of the money from that. So I think that first we would uh, we will print the DVDs here in Russia. That will happen like maybe in two weeks from now. Um, and when all this COVID shit is over, <laughs> you know, then we will also make a follow up with the Blu-ray. But that's how it looks like, you know. Um, speaking about that, speaking about touring, what's going on with your touring? Well, uh, it, it, <laughs> it's a roller coaster of emotions right now <laughs> because uh, I don't know how it works in Russia, but here in Italy and in general in Europe, uh, in the Central Europe, everything is changing from day by day. Uh, one month ago, I would have never said that we could have actually toured in September. I mean, the tour was on, it was never cancelled, of course, but the hope <laughs> was fading, I would say. Uh, I would say. Uh, but right now, things are moving. Uh, you know, we've been passing from, yes, we will tour in September, to, no, it's impossible to tour in September, to, okay, let's keep our finger crossed, and let's hope that uh, we will tour in September, to the actual situation where it's really likely that we will tour in September, uh, but there is this tour with uh, Visions of Atlantis as headlining act, um, Yibanish Privateers as uh, main support, and Ad Infinitum, that is a new fantastic symphonic metal band um, that will be uh, featuring as uh, opening act for this, for this tour. Uh, everything should start in mid-September and should end in mid-October. Uh, we have like 20, 22 shows that are, that are planned, and I mean, Right now, the situation and the feeling is really, really positive. Unfortunately, uh, what has happened before is that we have to cancel a lot of our planned shows. This year, 2020, should have been the, the year where uh, Visions of Atlantis should have played the most. Uh, we had... You're not alone! <laughs> yeah, I know. We were in the USA when the, when the COVID happened, opening for uh, Dragon Force and Unleash the Archers. Uh, we should have uh, get back from the USA and performed uh, a 20 shows tour in Europe as headlining act. Then it was not announced yet, but we should have had another leg of the USA tour with uh, uh, with Dragon Force. And after that, there should have been uh, the entire summer season with uh, like 10, 12 uh, summer festival shows. Back in open air, it should have been my first. Zach and Open Air Festival as a, as a performer, not only as a, as a guest there. Um, I don't know if it's possible, but there I have like eight or nine tickets from the latest uh, Holy. Zach and Open Air because I'm a that's huge fan. So that's fan. eight or nine years. Yeah. I'm a super fan of the Zach and Open Air Festival. I've never love, been I, there. I love the spirit. But I wish. I love, 
I decided for myself the first time I'd be there is when I play there. You know? But it's up to the promoters. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you know, the thing is that once you go there and you breathe this fantastic atmosphere, you can't, uh, you can't uh, save yourself from going there another time and another time and another time. Basically, it was my summer holiday. Uh, I spent all my holidays. Uh, I mean, I saved my days every every year to go there at Wacken and with this, you know, medieval uh, slash metal slash friendly slash fun slash party atmosphere, and it's just amazing, amazing. But um, what about you? What about the UK shows? Well, so so far, so far the UK tour which we should have had in April it's postponed to September I think it starts okay. on September the 23rd nobody has been I mean we're in contact with our agent he's an amazing Dutch guy you know he's in contact with with a promoter born again concerts you know, you know the, the leader is one of the biggest promoters in the UK and everybody is positive so so far I mean all the tickets are valid um, what I can say that the only thing which troubles me is my own country here. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sh UK has never closed its borders. Um, the only problem right now is that if you get there, you have to stay two weeks on quarantine. <laughs> you know, me and Jane, we can do that because my family live in the UK. The rest of the band ha have a problem with that. But um, what we're mostly, but I, I'm sure that will be over by September. The EU seems to be opening in two weeks from now. At least that's what everybody is waiting for, you know. And the touristic countries, Italy included, you know, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Italy, they really want the tourists back. So I think that will open too. But <clears throat> um, I think that our government has had wet dreams about the Soviet U U Union and about the Iron Curtain. And right now we have the Iron Curtain back under the excuse of the COVID. And my only fear is that we might have problems with going out of the country. I really hope that I'm just being paranoid uh, because I heard a few days Putin said that we should open you know, uh, the, the, the borders for tourists and all that. But let's see what happens, you know. Right now, 90%, I would say that there is a 90% chance that the concerts in September happen in the UK because there is a 90% chance that Russia will open its borders in July or somewhere because, uh -huh. because otherwise all the tourist companies will go bankrupt, you know. So... Yeah. Uh, hmm? I mean, uh, right now there are a lot of positive feedbacks that are coming from pretty much everywhere you know on, on one side i'm always skeptical about any news on any side on everything because you know i'm one of those who thinks that the medias are really controlled by the governments and it's quite hard to you know uh filter what the new what the news uh, when the news are real and when they are you know moved by some political reason. It's kind of hard to understand uh, where the truth lies. Uh, even, if you, even if you listen to uh, scientists, sometimes you, you cannot trust them. I mean, I don't want to point uh, to anyone, but it must be said that the uh, OMS, the, the Worldwide Health Organization, has been giving, I mean, different news and different infos about this COVID thing since the very beginning, because at the very beginning, it was just flu, then it was super dangerous, then right now it's moving, it's changing, the virus is transforming into something weaker, but there is an option that it will be uh, getting stronger again in September. So basically they are saying everything and nothing at the same time. And they should be uh, the most important uh, health organization in the world. And everyone is not understanding them because they are not able to make themselves uh, understood by people uh, i i don't want to do something that is not i don't want to do a job that is not mine you know i'm not a scientist and i'm just a citizen who reads the news but it's totally unclear 
what is coming out from the official information. On the other hand, you've got a lot of, I mean, everyone, not only me, but everyone has friends that are scientists or that are medicine and medics or, you know, this connection, this private connection that you have, who actually you trust, you give your trust to because they should know better uh, things about this, this kind of uh, events, you know. Uh, when there is something happening in the economy, the best people you can ask is your friends that are working in the economical uh, side because they know what's happening. And if you trust them and if you think that they are smart people, they are the best people you can get in touch with to understand how things are, uh, are moving. And uh, the people that I know are telling me that actually the, the virus is getting weaker right now. It's something natural that happens with every virus. But again, I'm not a scientist, so my word counts really, really, uh, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't count that much. I'm just reporting things that I have been told. And if everything goes as always in the past, sooner or later, this virus will get weaker. And it's really likely that this will happen with the coming of summer, with the, with the uh, warmer months. So I really believe that uh, this whole thing will be easier to handle in the future, and I really do believe that you will go to the UK. The only question mark that I have, but uh, I don't think it will be like this, is this visa thing that you will have to do for going to the UK, but I think it's, it happens in 2021, isn't it? No, no, no. <clears throat> the UK tour is planned for this September. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, the visa to go to the UK will start in 2021. No, you know, no, no. this thing. Mm -hmm. From 2021, since the UK is out of the European community... You yeah, but we're Russians, it. we don't care. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not a EU. You know? So for, for us, nothing changes. <laughs> uh, we, we, we need visas to go to, to the EU. We need Schengen visas. We have them. I mean, me and Jane, we, we have five-year visas. You know? uh, and... <clears throat> And our getting a UK v visa has never been a problem for us. We've done that four times already. And uh, I actually used to have a, um, a, a British permanent residence. I no longer ha have it, but I lived there a lot. Um, but that's not the problem. The, we actually applied for the UK visas in March. And all the bands and all the bands passports are still at the British Embassy in Moscow, because when the COVID hit, it just closed down. <laughs> so our passports are still <laughs> there, you know. Um, so visas, you know, are not the big. I mean, it's always a pain in the ass, but the <laughs> the rules the rules are clear. We know what to do. We've done that before. You know, it's not a big deal. So our I'm not worried about the UK. I'm worried about Russia, but I think that I'm over worried. I even in the worst case scenario, if we can't play the, the UK in September, we will not cancel the shows. We will move them. We will move them, I don't know, to January 2021, and then it, it will happen for sure because our uh, we I think I can announce this now. We have some our uh, South American dates at the end of November. And we have some North American dates in December, and oh, nice. if and we have tons of European dates for January and February, all as headliners. And if not for the COVID, this will would have been announced already. You know, it would have been this huge world tour uh, in support of the new album. But because but when the COVID hit, everybody said, okay, let's wait. That's obvious. Um, but we, we from what we can see now, at the end of November it should be fine, you know. So, um, unless there is a revolution in in the United States. But on the other hand, it doesn't mean we cannot play rock concerts there. So. <laughs> no, that's that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> the situation in the USA was already bad before the latest uh, events <laughs> right now it's just crazy i know i know well but, i yeah. don't support violence but i like to see that americans still have balls to protest i wish some other countries could have the same balls you know to fight for their freedom so yeah, I, let's I, see I how it goes
I see what you mean. I mean, you have to do it uh, smartly. That's the most important thing, you know, because uh, there are many forms of protest. And I mean, the violent one is definitely the worst one. But on the other hand, if you always shut your mouth, you don't, you can't achieve anything in, in, in your life. So, uh, yeah, um, it, it's not, it's not by staying silent that you will change things. And I mean, it started from violence, but let's not dig into this because it's, uh, you know, I, I do believe that when you talk about uh, bad events, you kind of attract some uh, bad atmosphere around oh, you. So absolutely. I definitely rather not think about what's going on right now, right there, not because I don't care, but because, you know, we all have eyes and we all have a, a brain to think about what's happening there. And I mean, if you just read the news, every news in this in, in this time, it's not like the COVID, it's pretty clear uh, what happened. We are all able to think and to realize what, uh, I mean, that what should have been done and what not. This is the only thing that I would say. <laughs> Well, speaking of what you said before, be, before our band are, could support us full time, I used to work as an English interpreter and uh, as an English teacher, and I had some VIP clients, you know, and I worked actually 10 year, for 10 years, not full, full time, but I used to interpret on medical congresses and to some of the top Russian doctors who are members of the World Health organization and um and in fact i did three big congresses and you know a lot of other things so i kind of and jane she's also a doctor by by education and it's like i have doctors around me all my life for some reason <laughs> uh when when i was a kid i also wanted to be a doctor <laughs> so um um from what I can see right now, and also, you, you know, I, stu I studied to be a historian, so for seven years I, I almost got a PhD, but I quit, you know, to do the music, to do metal full-time. Uh, but what, what I can see from, and I also come from, from a scientific family, you know, but, uh, but from what I can see how science works, uh, mo modern science is not really... That's my opinion, okay? Modern science is not always about the truth. It's very often about um, the number of quotations that you get in different scientific magazines. And in order to, to get it, because you're paid based on those quotations. And in order to get those quotations, your ar articles uh, should, should be approved by, by what's called peer review. And that basically means censorship by your colleagues and people who are higher than, than you in the social science hierarchy. Um, and I mentioned that before, that my diploma work, I, I at the Moscow State University, at the historical faculty, I wanted to, it to be, what were all the great powers searching for in Tibet, you know? But the commission didn't approve that, and they said, you're going to study are the Russian explorers of Tibet. And that's a huge, huge difference, you, you know, how they went and what they did and what were they looking for, you know, that's what was the purpose of the entire thing. And it's always like, like, like that. So uh, whenever something comes from official sor sources, I'm always extremely skeptical because um, also, as a historian, I can say that there has never been a time in human history when um, the government, when the ruling elite was not lying to, to the people. <laughs> because mm -hmm. uh, in order to manage people, you have to manipulate them. In order to manipulate them, you have to lie to them. So anything that comes from official sources is by definition already not true. That's that because that's how that's how it works. If you have to manage, you, you know, 100 million people, if you want to keep them un, under control, that's what you you do because otherwise you don't. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's like herding sheep. Yeah, I, I totally see what you mean, and this is also one of the main reasons why I I really do uh, think about uh, my field. 
and what I can achieve in my field without caring too much of what's happening, you know, in the surroundings. I believe that every single one of us has his own path. Uh, like, I've been choosing to be a musician. Back in the days, I, I, I believe I was 15 or 14. It's 20 years ago right now. And I was, I would say, I, I don't want to be selfish or, be, you know, to be uh, someone who... Uh, Thinks too speaks too well about himself, but I think I was smart to understand that if I wanted music to be my path, I should have focused on music and music only. I mean, reading, uh, keeping myself uh, acknowledged of what's happening in the surrounding, and being aware of what of what was going on in the world. Reading news, reading books, being you know uh, well thought. This is extremely important. But on the other hand. I should have focused on my path and I should have uh, put all my energies and all my efforts in what I wanted to do. Because if I started to care about something else, on one side I would have lost some opportunities and on the other hand, I believe, I strongly believe that I would have worried myself too much about other things. Right now, this is a perfect example of the situation. During this COVID thing, if I would have started to worry too much about the overall situation, I would have lost so many things and so many chances to do a lot of the things I did in the music field because I was too worried and too uh, not focused and too much unfocused on what I had to do. You know, you are a musician. I am a musician, and there are a lot of musicians in 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 the in the world that should think about music. Politicians should do the politicians' jobs. Engineers should do the engineering job, engineering job as as much as, of course. Medics should do their job, and if we focus, uh, like I would say, more than one hundred percent, because one hundred percent is never enough. <laughs> in what you want to do and in what you what you care for, then your path is clear, and you don't need anything else. I don't know if you agree on this. I don't want to be someone who doesn't care about the rest. This is not what I'm saying. But being acknowledged of what's happening and caring too much about something that is not yours are two completely different things. I don't know if you get if you get what, uh, I what I mean. I completely agree, but first of all, some people are writing that your t your volume is a bit too low. Can you increase your volume a, a little bit? Is it possible? I believe uh, I believe I can. Let me try from Skype. Because I can I from here. We're coming into the same channel. If I increase the channel, I increase both of us. I cannot mix Do it. Do you hear me well? Do you hear yeah, me well? I I hear you perfectly, right into my brain here. <laughs> okay, so probably it should be a bit louder right now because I switched to the automatic setting to the manual setting and I'm mm -hmm. right at 10 out of 10 uh, in terms of volume. Okay, volume. guys, please and write. I see myself almost clipping right now. So. Yeah, I can see myself clipping all the time, but if I bring myself down, I also bring you you down, you know, <laughs> because we're in the okay, same channel. Perfect. I. I cannot separate us, at least not right now. Uh, speaking about what you speak, when I was a kid, as I said, I first wanted to be a doctor, but then I decided to, to be a politician. And there are, and that's why I went to the historical faculty. Uh, people will say, still a bit low, maybe a bit higher, just a wee bit. Ah, it's the maximum. Problem is, I cannot make both are lower without lowering you. That's the problem. Oh no! Wait a minute! I can't. Woohoo! Wait a minute. And the and the eye source. That's you. I've just made you five decibels louder. Okay, guys, please. Fantastic. Let's see. Please comment on this. Now make should be louder than, than me. Okay. Because I was at the maximum right now. Maximum input level. <laughs> yep. Okay, so, and the reason why I ultimately decided to fuck politics because I, and I decided to be a musician because I, re I realized what people are writing here. They say all politicians lie all the time. I agree completely. Um, that's why I decided not to be a politician, you know, uh, because I decided that if you're a politician, you're always hated, you're always in conflict with somebody, um, you're always in a fight. And you always have to step over your own conscience. You know, it's just not cool. So I decided to become a, a, a musician, you know, and instead of imposing things of people, you know, just to have the, this 
hardly connection from person to person which goes beyond borders and beyond any ideology and and beyond all this crap that we're being told from every household appliance you know 24 hours a day and I have never regretted that choice, I can tell you. <laughs> but that's also the reason people say, look, there are so many conspiracy theories. And like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they start cranking on them and, you know, imposing censorship. And But ask, why is that happening? There, and the reason is, is very simple, because people are not trusting the official sources. They say, why are you not reading the WHO g guideline, you know? Or why are you not trusting the trusted experts? Because the trusted experts are the ones people no longer trust because they have been, you know, bullshit shitted so many times that nobody trusts them anymore. Look at UFOs, for, for example. For a hundred years, our ufologists have been ridiculous, you know? You know? People's lives were broken. People were told that th this is all nonsense. It doesn't exist. You know, people's careers, scientific careers, were shed into pieces. And then, a few weeks ago, the American Pentagon releases official footage of UFOs, three videos. It's, it's in the news, but where is the sensation? Where are the apologies to all the people whose lives have been ruined? Where are the apologies to people who have been laughed at? Where is all that? They silently admit to say, yeah, it, yeah, it exists. And nothing. And, and it's always like funny that. Fact, funny fact, do you know that that videos were released by one of the Blink-182 guys three years ago? Did you know it? Yeah, not only by them. They were cir circulating online for seven years, you know. And everybody say, that's bullshit, that's fake, you know. And only now, the, 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 the Pentagon admits it. Finally, you know, it's... <laughs> Tom DeLonge from Blink-182 who released them or, or something like this. <laughs> but he runs, he runs a, a page where he talks about UFOs and I mean he's a super huge fan of, of uh, the entire the entire UFO uh, facts and he has this page where he releases a lot of uh, UFO clear movies and and footages so it's it's crazy yeah and it's unbelievable that right now they are saying yeah that's true like so so what. <laughs> it was clear. It's Guys are are right are writing that you're still too low and that Russia has better microphones. That's bullshit. This is Sennheiser. That's Germany. <laughs> I mean, but I will make. But I have found how to mix it. So I'm making you ten decibels louder. Let's see how it works. Okay, speak something. I am speaking. We can hear you well right now. Can you hear me right now? One, two, three, four, five. You're still a wee bit quieter than I am. Ah, I was mixing the wrong thing. Hmm. How do I put you? That's a that's a technical question. How do I split us into two channels? Because we're coming into one channel, and what what I was doing it doesn't work. If you can increase yourself from your side please do that because i don't know how to do it from here i'm like uh, 10 out of 10 but question is can you lower yourself down from skype and raise the entire thing but i'm not going in through skype i'm going in through obs that's the problem uh, and you're going in via skype into obs and we're in the same audio channel and I muted your separate channel because people were saying that you were doubled, and that's true, I can see you being doubled. But if I could find a way to mute you from my channel, then I could uh, set up a separate channel for you, and then that would work. What I'd... I can try is to switch microphone, but I don't know if it does, if it does help. Let's see what happens if I go from uh, here. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? What about now? It's not. Yeah, now, you hear me back. now I can hear you, yeah. But it, yeah, it wasn't working. Skype, 
Skype doesn't recognize the switch. Okay. Uh, when, when, the, when the conversation is already online, it, it doesn't recognize it. Let's see. Oh, speak now. Yes, my friend. Blah, blah, blah. Check me one, two, check me one. What two. about now, guys? Is he louder? Do you hear me louder? Someone says, go 11 out of 10. <laughs> Let me check one thing in Skype. Uh, preferences, audio and video settings. Let me try and make you louder if I can find a way to do this. Microphone, audio, speaker. Uh, not really. You know, nah. In the meantime, I will read some comments and I will answer to some comments. Oh yeah, there are, there are like tons a of them. Lot of them. So while you check this thing out... Oh, guys are saying that you're better. Okay, you depend on the volume, which I set on my computer here. You're very loud in my ears, but, but I can live with that. <laughs> as <laughs> as long as it's, you I'll just you, you yeah yeah. That's the problem with in ears. <clears throat> right. So people are saying that it's some, finally great. Some saying it's better. Some saying it's the same. Okay. Well, what can I do? What can I say? Um, I people say that when you lean forward, it's better. Which is weird what because is you're speaking from yeah, your. It's, it's from here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to everyone who say nice shirt, uh, that's because I wanted to tribute Mark Janssen and Epica that were guests of Imperial Age last week. Uh, I do believe that Imperial Age are doing something really nice with this, you know, uh, intersections of bands. Actually, tomorrow, tomorrow there is another uh, live stream from you guys because Lena from uh, Infected Brain will be your guest uh, and she will have a Q&A with, uh, uh, with Jane, yeah. With Jane, okay, with Jane. Uh, <laughs> uh, so get in sync tomorrow at 8 p.m. again, 8 CET. Sa same time as we are now. T tomorrow two beautiful girls will be talking I don't know what, what they're going to be yeah. talking about but they are going to be talking about something for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be definitely better looking than than us. That's for granted. No offense, but I, I guess you, uh, I, I believe you, you agree with me on this. <laughs> okay, people like how you sound. Good. It's Fantastic. become better. That's nice. So let's see what um questions do we have. But speaking about science, you know. All right, but let's see the question for. First, are you in a hurry? Absolutely no. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> nope. I mean, look, 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 look at all that. I can't. We cannot possibly answer all of that. But um. Thank you, nine sixty four, Mark. I'd be a little jealous if North and South America end up seeing you before me. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> did you Did you ever play here in Italy? Yes, actually, yes, I we saw did. you. I saw you. It was the Open Land Tour, um, and you were touring with another band. It was called Voodoo Kung Fu. Yeah. Yes. Well, some and tiny I, venues I, I, and tiny shows. I don't remember the name of the venues. Dag the Club. Dag the Club. Okay, Dag the Club. I remember the name, but where where was it? Uh, it's it was. The old location of the club, it's in Retorbido, it's uh, nearby Pavia. It was this huge, uh, like, mm, sports center. It was a sport oh, center. yeah, that was actually a very good show. It was yeah. right in the middle of a vineyard, and we had a really good walk around. And we never could, we, when we went there, we just, what the fuck, we're in the middle of, we're in the middle of a village. And the goats are like, <laughs> you know, and I, okay, are we going to have a metal show here? It's fantastic. I love the countryside. You know, we the first thing we did, we went into the vineyards for a walk. But I said, okay, who, who's going to come to the show? And then I see people arriving by cars, and we go, okay, so this is a new t tradition for us. Some something we don't have here, you know. And I, I drove, I drove three hundred kilometers wow. to see that show that night. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> because I'm completely on the other side of the northern Italy. But, but the I air, really the, I, I remember the air, it was fantastic, all, all the hills and the vineyards and the forest, it's like, wow. And, and the show was good, yeah. Absolutely, the sound was amazing, that venue has a really, really nice PA, 
and I mean the venue was really nice. It, it was one of the best we had in Italy. Right now they have moved and they had to make everything smaller. Nice cat on your back. <laughs> yeah, her her name is Cor. Yeah. Yep, she's in it in every live stream because she likes you know be, being where I am. <laughs> I would show you my hamster, but he's sleeping. Right <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that venue is, is, was really nice. Right now, as I said, it's, it's uh, smaller. It's still, it is still really good, but uh, unfortunately not that big anymore. Uh, but I remember it was a really nice show. I was impressed because I didn't know, I have to admit, I didn't know you back, uh, back in the days. It was the first time I heard about you and about this uh, band from Russia. And I was really impressed. I was impressed by Voodoo Kung Fu that, I mean, you've been touring with them. I believe it should have been, uh, it, it must have been kind of weird because they are uh, performing a strange uh, style. I, I wouldn't call it metal at all. It's um, some I mean, sort of theater rather, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Theatric and performance. Some, and some religious stuff too, isn't it? Not religious, it's rather spiritual, you know. It's not, spiritual, yeah. Not the same thing. I, I understand, I understand. But yeah, it's... How was that tour? Well, that tour was like um, 30, 30 people <laughs> at the show. But actually, we played a lot in Italy, but we never played as headliners. So, uh, we played in Brescia once, and the second time there was no show because it was snowed under. It was very funny because it was Therion. Our uh, headliners, we were the, the mid-act, and they were telling us that the show was cancelled because of snow. You know, one band from Sweden and the, the other band from Russia. <laughs> so we have snow, we have snow like every day in, in, in the winter. We just got, okay, snow, and, you know, and then they said, no, 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 we cancelled the show. We played uh, in Orion, that's right outside Rome. Uh, we played in... Um, in a few other cities, the name of which I don't remember because my map of the world is in my kitchen, which is <laughs> right, right there. But we played, I think, five or six shows in Italy. Yeah. And we long to come back there with headline shows. That would be fantastic. Well, you're And what about right? your, your playing in Russia? So, uh, in the last two years, I've been performing in Russia more than in Italy, actually. <laughs> I, I had the chance to come a couple of times to Moscow for the Big Gun Festival. Uh, then we performed there in another smaller festival also in Moscow. Uh, unfortunately, the COVID didn't allow me to perform with ERA because, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, my main band right now is Visions of Atlantis, that's for sure. Uh, I perform with Temperance too, as many of uh, the people are, are making me notice, <laughs> of course, and making us notice. But I, I'm also performing as singer for uh, ERA, this uh, bigger new age uh, rock uh, slash alternative uh, slash mm, different stylish uh, big band. Uh, and we've been performing a lot of shows in France, Switzerland, um, something in Belgium, and in uh, February, we had two shows in, in, that were scheduled in Russia, one in St. Petersburg and the other one was in, in uh, Moscow. Uh, it should have been, they should have been amazing venues and amazing shows with like three, four thousand people per night. But unfortunately, they got cancelled because of the COVID. I hope and I believe that they will reschedule the shows. Uh, but I've always, find, I, 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 I've always found Russian people and Russian um, Russian venues really, really, really warm. Uh, it's like, you know, uh, there, there is a huge difference between the weather in your country and your heart and your soul, <laughs> guys from Russia, because you really are warm. Uh, I really, one thing I really remember is that in one of my first shows in Russia with Temperance, everyone in the venue wanted to hug me. I don't know if this is something that is uh, you are used to, but Everyone was hugging us, like That's cool. me, Alessia, Marco. They were all so warm. They wanted to feel in touch with us. And it was amazing because, you know, in certain countries, everyone is on his side. You know, they, they want to listen to your music. They want to hear you performing. But the human side is not always that 
uh, that one. Of course, South Americans and Spanish people, they are extremely warm. And somehow I felt that there was some connection between, you know, one side of the world and the other one. Because the vibe that I felt in Russia was really similar to the South American one. You really were uh, warm. That's the only, only word that I could use to describe the feeling. Well, you know, I actually have the same opinion, but about the foreign audience. <laughs> so I guess there is <laughs> uh, this saying that there is no profit in his own country. You know what I mean? So, uh, <clears throat> so we actually experienced the warmest crowds as far from our own country as possible, including Italy, by the way. You know, and like UK, France, Germany, there. So it, I think it, it depends on where you come from. <laughs> yeah, sure. At least from my observations. But right now, imperialists are, are looking forward to headlining shows, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's your time. I, I yeah, well, time. we had, a, a, as I said, a world tour planned for the end of 2020 and the beginning 2021. I still hope that par part of it will still happen, but we should see what the what, what, what all this craziness, how it will unfold, you know. And I'm not only talking about COVID, you know, I'm also talking about the American riots and all that stuff, so. Yeah, because, you know, I, I'm often asked this question. There are a lot of people that always and often ask which band would you like to tour with? And somehow I believe that the right answer to this question is uh, I want to headline. <laughs> right now I believe that especially for two bands like ours, uh, the time the time has come to start to walk on our own legs. I don't know Absolutely. if this sentence is used on, in Russia too, but you know in Italy we used to say it's time to walk on your own legs, meaning that the time has come to prove that you can actually do something on your own. You cannot always rely on other bands. I mean, of course, it's awesome to tour with super huge bands like Nightwish, like Epica. I love those bands. I've got tons of CDs from huge acts, you know, and it's not only symphonic metal. I, I'm a fan of music. I love Muse. I love System of a Down. I love Rammstein. I love a lot of bands. And if I could choose to do something for fun, of course, I would like to follow a tour of any of the bands I'm a fan of. But on the other hand, if I think, and I speak really directly about this, if I think of the growth that Visions of Atlantis should have right now, and it's the same for Imperial Age. I mean, we've been working hard for years. Uh, I know I'm new in Visions of Atlantis, but I perfectly know how Thomas uh, worked hard on, on this band and how we uh, built and rebuilt everything a couple of times and finally it's time to prove that Visions of Atlantis is a band that can make it uh, to, the, to the next level, to the, to the next step I believe we are ready and we have to start, of course the first show won't have thousands of people uh, attending, attending the, the concert, attending the gigs but you have to begin from somewhere and I absolutely believe that it's the same for you uh, and I, I would say that for you it's even harder because, you know, coming from the Central Europe is something. Coming from Russia, I mean, it's not only a matter of expenses. For you it's more expensive to get into the Central Europe and to the, let's call it, market. But on the other hand, it's also harder for plenty of other reasons that I'm sure you, you can explain better than me. But it's time to do it. I believe it's, it's our moment. <laughs> well, that... I definitely, um, wait, wait a minute, I have a lag, let me fix it, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Just a second. No worries. In the meantime, as always, I will read some, some comments. Uh, will you be coming to Cardiff in Wales once it's safe to the tour? I believe this is a question for you guys. Uh, for regarding the UK tour, I uh, was born in Russia, I've lived in Sweden 16 years, Igor Skoglil, nice. Uh, thank you for saying VOA is definitely a headliner. I mean, it's, it's about time, I would say, it's about time to, to really step forward. How about a joint tour, Imperial Age, Vision of Atlantis and Tech Brands? That would be awesome, 
But uh, one thing that I'm often saying right now is that if I could choose, I wouldn't mix any more Visions of Atlantis and Temperance. This happened in, uh, in, in the Symphonic Metal Nights in 2018. And I believe that there are a hundred reasons why Visions of Atlantis and Temperance should be separate. Uh, not because we don't love each other, we all love each other, we are a big family. Uh, Alessia came a couple of times with Visions of Atlantis too to uh, support us, uh, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of both bands, of course. Uh, and I, I love what we do, uh, so it's not because I don't want to perform with one or the other band, but it's just because, uh, you know, it's, it's important to identify the two bands. I believe that uh, I believe that Alexander would tell you would tell you the same. If he had two bands, I don't know if he has two bands, but if he had two bands, I'm sure that one of the most important thing is to uh, identify the band you are playing with. And it's not that good to see one singer or one band member to perform with two bands in the same days because the impact is not exactly uh, it's not exactly. Uh, as strong as it would be if you know that you are talking with the singer of Visions of Atlantis or the singer of Temperance as much as uh, any other member, of course. Oh, I think I fixed my video. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, <laughs> but also, also I can, can roger, roger what you, you, you say, say because, because... Oh, you, you know, um, we, have we have also done, done some support tours, tours. We've, we've done, done some headline and tours. tours. The bottom line is that when, when you play... You play a support, a support tour. tour. At, At the, the best, best case scenario, scenario you break, break even financially. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's if your merch, merch you know, sells, sells like fantastically. fantastically. Um, um, when, when you play, you play as a headliner, headliner if, it's if it's properly organized, organized you, you earn money. money. You, 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 might, you, you maybe earn, earn a little bit, bit but you earn money. money. You're in plus. plus. So, so that's, that's one thing. Second thing. We, we always, always had actually fantastic, fantastic crowds, crowds when we played as support bands. bands. I, I mean, the, the crowd, crowd always supported and loved us. us. That, that was amazing. amazing. But, but you know, you know having, having your own crowd, crowd even if it's, it's ten, ten times smaller, smaller uh, has, has always, always been, been you know much more energizing, energizing at, at least, least for, for me. me. So, so uh, we have been talking about this a lot, you know, with my band and with the manager and with the agent. And we feel that, um, you know, growing ourselves is probably the better option. Um, it doesn't mean we don't want to play a support act. We definitely do if the conditions are good, you know. Um, but um, I think that every band should aim at what you're saying, you know, so that, um, so that you can have it more or less your own way. Yep, yep. I mean, if you don't start, you will, you won't get that place. I would say, you have to start, and you have to believe in your in your music, because this is what it's all about. You know, you have to prove yourself, and you have to prove people that you can uh, face a headline show. Because people, believe me, when I say that, it's not just a decision that you make for a musician. When you get on stage and you have to perform a headline shows. You have all the responsibilities on you. It's not only a matter of choosing. Yeah, let's go uh, headlining on the road. Let's go. Let's let's do it. It's not just like a blink of an eye and suddenly you pass from being the super band for someone bigger to uh, being the the headliner for uh, in, in a bigger tour. You have to. You have steps uh, to follow. You have goals to achieve, and you have to bring it on. And you have to face the hard and the. Uh, and the easy uh, t things that you have to, 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 to face on the road, you know. Um, a lot of people often ask, come to this place, come to this other place, come to play in Brazil, come to Spain, come to uh, whatever, India. But uh, as a musician, we would love to perform everywhere. I think you agree on, on this. Absolutely. But it's on the other side of the metal, you have to face all the organization things that are way harder that anyone expects because uh, you know if if I perform with one of my bands in Russia on my own I won't have I absolutely won't have enough enough uh, finance financial uh, power financial strength to do this on my own I will need to rely on someone else 
Otherwise, it's a complete loss. And unfortunately, for those bands who are working properly, the band is also an organization. It's not only fun. You have accounts to take. You have a, an, an account to manage. You have you know Absolutely. everything that that a real organization has. And you have to keep this in mind as a musician and as a music lover. Because if it was for me, if I was rich, I would go everywhere. I would <laughs> invest my own money to play and perform everywhere. I swear to God, my main goal, my main lifetime goal, is to perform 200 to 20, 250 shows in one year. Wow, this is that what would I be really cool. Want yeah. to achieve in my life. But then you I need mean, really I good conditions good and a good nightliner because other, otherwise it's going to be <laughs> impossible. <laughs> but that's that's the dream of my life. And there are there are some people in, in this chat that know me quite quite well, like Ingrid, for example, and she perfectly knows that one of my dreams is to achieve this number, this amount of shows. Oh yeah, that would be cool. But on the other on the other hand, I know that this can only happen if I can make it also on the economical side and there is no uh secret behind this it's it's something that every band who works properly can do because there are a lot of bands unfortunately that get black money and works for black money and everything is easier but that doesn't last long you can't bring this to the long term because sooner or later something happens and i believe that imperial age are perfectly aware of this visions of atlantis are totally aware of this and we have to make things clean because we are workers this is a real job for us and we have to keep track of everything so even if we want to perform and play everywhere it's really really hard to do it and to make it become real but we will try <laughs> because this is our dream <laughs> absolutely yeah as, as soon as, as the lockdown is over people, people stop, stop panicking. panicking yeah we can try and go and do that. In the meantime, we have some tons of questions here. Oh, our drummer, Max, is telling us that that is time to kiss. I think that would be technically difficult given the thousands of kilometers. Um, I, think he, I, th I think he's drunk again. Right. Um, hmm? I, I was reading a comment to say, I hope uh, you all uh, of your honor, you, uh, you all get, I think, uh, get the honor you can get. Uh, this is Sasha Gensler, he's saying this. Uh, headlining shows might be great, but the bigger you get the possibility to become out of reach, you feel like friends, I like it this way, might get lost. Well, I believe, I believe, this is interesting, I believe that collaborations between bands is on the basis of everything. Oh yeah, I mean, that's true. Alexander and I didn't know each other before before the last uh, the last week, and we started to chat to each other uh, during mm -hmm. during this week. You know, to get to know uh, each one uh, each one else. And once again, it was proven that when you achieve uh, when you try to follow the same dream, uh, the mindset of the two of the two guys here was extremely similar. Yeah. yeah, and this is a, an amazing side of music because I can see in him the same effort, uh, the same guy who wants to reach something that I am, and it's crazy how the more you talk with professional musicians, the more you see that they are willing to treat you as a friend because basically Absolutely. we are living in the same world, we are doing the same thing, we are following the same dream, we are walking the same path, and there is no competition in this. I mean, it's there are plenty of roads to walk together. There, there is plenty of space in this huge road that all the bands are, are, are walking on. And I believe that you would, will agree on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've always, always been, been saying, saying that, you know, any fan of music can buy more, more than, than one, one CD. CD. Yeah. Uh, I am... I, I, I am personally a fan of a zillion band. When people ask me to tell what's your favorite band, I don't know. I just cannot give you one name. Most recently, I cannot even give you five names. So, and especially today with the streaming, most people, you know, you know, you know, you know they have their own playlists. 
where where, where they, they have, have one or two songs from every artist they, they, they listen to, and it can be like I don't know, 100 artists. artists. So, so this, this is, is not the same as when, I don't know, you're selling oranges at the market, and there are tw 20 other old ladies who are selling oranges as well, but there is only one customer who can only buy one kilogram of oranges. You know? it's, it's not the same situation. We're, we're not in a competition here. And also, as, as I've been saying, the guys from the hip-hop scene, from the rap scene, they are very savvy about this. They understand this. And they have all these multiple collaborations. You know, They do things together. Uh, and I think that's the way to go in general, and that's the way to go in metal, and especially in symphonic metal. And so far, I definitely know that our the aforementioned Mark from Epica is completely into this ideology. Also, I know that Christopher Janssen from Therion is also completely supporting this. Uh, I spoke to him about that as well. You know, so the more people that actually think this way, the better the industry will be. Because I've been told, for example, by managers that you should not make friends, you know, with a headliner because you're their competitor. I think that's that's the worst thing. <laughs> that's the worst advice you, you, you can follow because, um, you know, it's like um. It's like, it's like ra radio, radio waves. waves. You, you have, have this sine, sine wave, wave and, and our resonance, resonance occurs, occurs when you have two, two similar waves, waves which go uh, along, along the same, same pattern, pattern and, and then they're, they're both stronger, stronger you know? Yeah. But, but if, yeah, totally but but if, if they, 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 they have different timing or different phase, phase then they, they start, start canceling out each other and both become weaker. It's, it's the wrong ideology. ideology. I've, I've always, always been, been or the, the advocate of a win-win win strategy. You know, you, you, you can, can always find a way where everybody benefits. I believe that I know most bands, I mean, as a fan, I, I've been listening to most of the bands I know because of another band. I remember that everything to me started with Gamma Ray. <laughs> I was a super power metal guy when I was younger. And when I discovered Gamma Ray, I started to listen to this music and I said, oh, I love this. I want more. I didn't say I will listen to Gamma Ray and Gamma Ray only forever and ever. Yeah. I said to myself, I want more. Yeah. And this is how I get into Halloween, into Primal Fear, yeah, yeah, and yeah. into Bad Guy, Avantasia, and blah, blah, blah. And this is how I ended, ended up performing and, and being a musician myself and singing. And I discovered your band and so many other, other bands, you know. And this is exactly the way it works. Everything starts from one band, and then you know there are uh, there are all these uh, settlements uh, everywhere that brings you to one and another and another and another band. And this goes for the fans as much as for the musicians, because thanks to you I get to know more musicians. Thanks to me you will get to know yeah, more absolutely. musicians. Yeah. Connections will will create and the net the network of music will be larger and happier. If someone breaks one of these legs, one of these uh, sides of the net, there is something lost. There is a connection that is taken away and it breaks the connection between others. This is why it's completely wrong to create a competition market. Absolutely. And yeah. Even, even, even in, in terms of sales, it's crazy to think that there is a competition because if tomorrow uh, Nightwish will get even bigger, it means that more people that are not metalhead right now will get to know. Exactly, that means you will become bigger, we will become bigger, everybody in the genre will become bigger, yeah. And they will crave for more symphonic metal bands, and then they will start to like other styles and other genres. And so there, there can't be competition, it's like the opposite of yeah. what we want to do. Yeah. And this is why, yeah, this manager, you, you were talking Fortunately, about. Fortunately, a lot of people, people don't, don't want, want to understand this, and a, 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 lot, a lot, lot of them are in positions of positions power in the industry. industry. That's, That's the problem, I think, also. Because yeah, the, there, there are, like, like really, really ugly, ugly things, things, you know, when bands, bands are being downplayed, downplayed in favor of, of, of others, others, you know, like, like when, when 
when, mm, when when record, record label labels sign bands and then, then put them, them on the shelf, shelf do nothing and promote other bands, bands instead, instead you know and and ugly things, things like like that that's, that's something which I really don't, don't understand, understand and, and don't, don't like. like so I completely agree with, with what you say, say. And unfortunately, but unfortunately, not everybody does. Yeah, someone probably is scared or not, or is not confident enough with what he has in his hand. Because I believe that only, only if you fear something, you could go in in a in a different direction. Even labels. I mean, I had the luck of of uh, of having my band, both my bands, into one of the actually best labels in the in the metal scene, Napalm Records, and. Everyone I knew into Napalm Records was extremely smart and extremely aware that the more each band grows, the better it is for the label too and for everyone. Because the more this network I was talking about uh, spreads, the better it is also for the market. So it's not only a matter of you know being kind or creating a facade because you have to be nice to someone else. I mean, we are talking about people who decided to devote their life to music, to follow a risky dream, because I'm sure, I mean, I'm not sure because I don't know you, but I know that music in general doesn't bring you to richness. Uh, I, I, I barely know musicians that are rich if they didn't come from the 80s, because back in the days it was, it was different, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but right now, right now, uh, you you actually don't earn much but you follow a dream and you do what you want to do in your life and this is the best gift that life can give you because having the chance to live my life performing and earning my money and paying my bills thanks to the music I'm doing it's something that I mean it, it's just to me it's just a dream I still feel uh, uh, stunned by this thing when I think about it because back in the days I was a kid was singing, playing the piano, playing a little bit of guitars, and my dream was, you know, to achieve the big stages. Right now, thanks to Visions of Atlantis, I am playing in uh, on that stage, on that stages that I was that was craving for, and I, I just have a dream that is coming true, and I feel so lucky. So I absolutely don't care about the money. It's not about the the, the earnings at all. It's about sharing something. And since I know how good this is. My only dream and my only wish for anyone else is that he can follow his dream and, and achieve it. Because this is, I mean, this is what life is about, you know? Trusting in what we, what we are and trying to reach what we want. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. It's romantic, I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> I, completely I completely understand you. That for me, me it's, it's a similar thing, thing. you know, the, the band has, has been, been around, around since 2012, 2012 but only over the last, last year, year we have, we have finally... finally are grown, grown to, to the level, level thanks, thanks to our, our fans. fans. Uh, we, we follow, follow a different model. model. We, we don't, don't have, have a record, record or label. label. Now, now it's willingly, you know, like four, four, four years, years ago, ago we were like craving for any deal, deal whatsoever. whatsoever. But, but now, now we're, we're actually, actually quite, quite happy, happy that it didn't happen because, because out of necessity, necessity uh, we learned to do it our own way. And now we find ourselves actually declining contracts. But uh, when uh, it actually started bringing enough money to live on, you know, when you buy yourself a piece of, fur of furniture, like this armchair, for example, or, or this monitor, for example, you know, and it's paid by your music, or this computer through which I'm streaming, you know, or the phone which is working as the webcam, I mean, like almost anything here, uh, then you really start, and it's all... And, and your, your fans, fans are, are saying, saying yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing, doing cool music, music. Here's, here's the money. money. No, that's, that's the, the, the ultimate point, point when you sit there and you think, OK, okay. Well, well, at least probably, probably I've made, made somebody, somebody happy, happy enough, enough, you know, <laughs> so, uh, that um, this actually materializes and comes true. true. I, I, I agree completely. And it's, it's yeah. It's, it's cool. cool. It's, it's it's nice, nice. and I would I also wish that, that to everybody involved. involved. Who, who, who who is there? Yeah, I mean, it's not only about music, you know. It's not only uh, this discussion doesn't doesn't stop in the in the musical environment because I mean everyone has a dream, and 
what what can I say? You have to follow. We have to follow your dreams, guys, because this is. I mean, we only have one life. I know it's like sentence that you hear and hear and hear, but you reach a certain point when you have to face this thing and you have to understand that if you want to be a medic, you have to to do it all. You have to put everything you have on the plate and follow. Oh yes, I completely agree. Because otherwise, you will regret it. It's all a matter of regrets, you know. And just like in love and relationships, if you stay on your side, telling yourself, I will do it tomorrow, I will start tomorrow, I will do it another day, I will, yeah, it, the time will come when I will feel comfortable with it, it no. will never happen. That, that time will never come. Yeah. Yeah. Never at all. If you start doing things with one goal, one focus, one clear idea in your mind, and this, I is, too. Part, this is the hardest part. Focusing what you want to do. And Absolutely. choosing Absolutely. But you have to do it. And once you have chosen what to do, then everything will be easier because even the harder things will be something that you know why you are fighting for. And you will just do it because you, you will feel this, this need. I mean, I, I, I felt it on my skin. I've been fighting against my family. I've been fighting against... Oh, you, you, you too. too. Mm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've been fighting against a lot of, a lot of friends and also... My old, uh, my old uh, uh, chiefs uh, in, in the previous jobs, because they always told me, if you keep on doing this thing with music, you will never reach what you want. You need a job. You need a real job. <laughs> you know, you need this. And even when I started to teach singing, the the owner of the music school where I, uh, school where I was teaching told me, you always have to keep one foot in this school. Because otherwise you won't have enough money to live your life as you wish. And this was totally untrue. This was totally untrue because if I did, I would have been limited in the research of what I wanted to do for real. So I went against everything. I ran against the winds. And right here, right now, I'm luckily in at least two successful bands, <laughs> I would say, uh, doing doing. Uh, what I want and even if I won't get as big as Nightwish, even if I won't get as big as uh, the, the super huge headlining act, I can say that I'm happy and this is because I follow my dream without the fear of losing something because without the fear of doing something wrong. This is the uh, suggestion that I would give to everyone. You have to focus, define, choose and fight for what you, what you want to do. No matter what it is, it's not only music. I... I Totally, totally, completely, completely agree, agree to this, this. And, and believe it or not, not I remember, remember a situation, situation back in, uh, when, when I was, I was well, well, a teenager, teenager. it was many, many years, years ago, ago. And, and it was my first band before, before Imperial, Imperial Age, Age. And, and we had, we had this, this, you know, this, this amateurish band, band meeting, meeting. Uh, and, and I said, I said oh, guys, you know, know we're going to pull arenas, because that's our plan. And everybody laughed. And they laughed all day, and they laughed all the next day. Well, guess what? Right now, it's 2020, all of them are out of music. All of them. Every single one of them is no longer a musician, and I'm here sitting and talking with you. And it has been like that all the way. Everybody around parents, I don't know, uh, parents-in-law, everybody, you know, friends, come on, metal, you're not metallic, and you're in Russia, you, you cannot earn with that. Russian bands don't earn from playing that kind of thing. Uh, you, you cannot do this, it's not going to happen, find yourself a job, you know, all the, go get married, get kids, you know, all this regular bullshit, you know. Um, Right, right now, now, in, in retrospect, retrospect, I'm just, I'm just happy, happy that I was, I was born, born with this immunity, immunity to being to told what to do. To do. <laughs> because I completely understand that some people who actually start listening, listening to all that, that they're, they're in, in big, big trouble. trouble. I, I think, think that, that the biggest problem of the majority of people is that they do things they don't love, is that their job is it's not, not their, their hobby, hobby, if you know what I mean. Like Henry, Henry Ford, Ford said, make yeah, your, your hobby your job, and there, there won't be a single day in your life when you have to work. work. No. So, so, 
are because and the reason here is simple because we were talking about competition are and we can we live in a musical and an artistic environment where the term is not exactly uh, applicable but in the regular trade competition exists and if you work you know with or against someone who loves their job and he doesn't you're gonna lose I mean if yeah that's for sure it's like, it's, 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 it's like 200 percent you, you know if one fa factory you know like Ferrari for example you know like five people but they're like fans you know they do it it's like in the film Ford against Ferrari it shows this thing completely one is a small company but they're fans you know and the other is a huge syndicate but people don't really care about the end result and are, that's, um, the, that's the, 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 the difference. difference. The, person the person who actually really loves what, what they do, they, they will be running circles around the other, the other guy, guy because, because they, they will be wor working off hours, hours you know? They, they will, will be working, working without payment, payment. you know? know they, they will, will be investing their own money. money. I, mean, I mean, resources, resources would not, not be a problem. problem. So, so if the only way to do something effective is doing what you love to do, which is always difficult, it's never easy. Because, because the, 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 the society, society will, will try, try to push, push you into its own frames. It will push you into, into, you know, uh, working, working somewhere, somewhere, doing something, but in the end, end it's going to be taking your energy and your, and your time, time away from you. From you. That's, That's how it's going to be. be. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah I completely I roger that. that <clears throat> this is also one of the reasons why uh, setting up a band is so hard. <laughs> I, don't know your, I don't know about your experience, but my past was crazy because every time i thought i was up to achieve something there were there were always someone some of my old uh, bandmates that suddenly realized that it was not his path that he wanted to do something else right now i have to say that i feel like i'm in heaven because i can see it in the eyes of every single one of my other band members both in vision of atlantis and in temperance when i when i see clary on stage She's just so much into it. It's clearly her world. And she knows that this is where she belongs. And this is the same for Thomas. I mean, Thomas has been struggling for years and years, as I said already. And right now, when I, you know, turn myself on stage and look at him in the eyes, I see that passion is burning. And he gives me energy, and I give him back energy. And there is this amazing connection between, uh, between us as, uh, as band members. And this is the same with Dushi, this is the same with Herbert, uh, and it's the same in Temperance, you know, when, I, when, I, when I'm on stage with Marco, when I'm on stage with, with, with Alessia, it's so natural to be there, it's so easy for each and every single one of us, that it's so clear that there is something, and that they are doing what they want to do. And right now, like I can say, it was never like this before in my previous bands, never. I'm sad to say this because I would have loved to keep on following and chasing my dream with someone, someone else, some of, of the friends that I've been growing with. Because like, for example, my very first band was called Overtures, and the vision player of Overtures was the friend of my life. And I'm, I'm still extremely sad that I couldn't um, chase the dream that we had together. But he chose another way. I'm happy for him. Uh, I know that he's happier now. And still, I wouldn't say I regret it, but I would have loved to keep following the dream, but it wasn't the right one. Right now, I really feel that I am where I belong, and I hope and think it's the same for, for you guys, because you are quite safe since uh, a lot of time. Thanks. thanks. Well, being a lot of work, but that's, that's absolutely, absolutely true. true. But actually, our music, music is in much of its part about this, this that, you know, you know, do, do what, what you want to do, you know live your own life you're the director the, the producer the main actor uh, everything of your own film you know make it cool you know make it worth watching that's what we what we're about speaking of topics of bands you know our most uh, popular song is called the legacy of atlantis and your and your band is called visions of atlantis is it just the name or is there some deeper Similarity, Similarity there, yeah. There, there's, there's quite a story uh, behind behind the Atlantis topic in Visions of Atlantis, as I as I uh, kind of uh, 
pointed to you in in, in our chats, and I would have, I told you that I would have uh, likely discussed about this in this in this in this live chat. Uh, actually, when they were founded, uh, Visions of Atlantis were a totally different man from what they are now, and of course there have been you know uh, eras <laughs> of the band with different lineups. Uh, due to many reasons. As I said, uh, Thomas is the only founding member left in the band. He is the one who who is carrying the dream and we are all thankful to him for having involved us and I believe and I think that right now he feels in a safe place also thanks to us so there is uh, this fantastic connection. But his dream um, started with this, with this concept of Atlantis. Uh, where Visions of Atlantis were a band that were talking and telling tales about the old world of Atlantis. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of legends uh, regarding Atlantis. There are a lot of theories, you know. Uh, some say that it was real. It was a real city that is now uh, uh, drowned uh, somewhere in, in the deep uh, in deep sides of the, of the oceans. Um, there are theories that it was an alien society that is now uh, flown away after after uh, a lot of things. There are theories that connect it to uh, the Bible and Moses and the uh, the flood uh, and the, the big flood. So uh, Atlantis was the society before uh, this uh, huge flood uh, where Moses saved a couple of any any animal. It's plenty of theories regarding regarding Atlantis and uh, the legends that were told in the tales of of uh, visions of Atlantis were just the easier ones, I would say, the ones regarding the old civilization then suddenly uh, destroyed by this, this huge flood and this change in the, in the weather that uh, made the seas rise and uh, flood, flood the, the entire island. Right now, the, the concept has been developed into something else because we felt like we didn't belong anymore uh, to the old uh, music, the old style and the old uh, concept that Visions of Atlantis had, but we are still fascinated by the world of the sea, by the legend of Atlantis itself and everything that involves this, this world. So we tried to find a connection between what we want to tell now with our songs. Actually, Clemmy is the lyric writer, she is the one who develops the entire universe and the entire visual world of Visions of Atlantis. I would say that on the visual side and on the concept side, Visions of Atlantis are a creation of Clementine right now, and we all love what she uh, what she crafted for this band. We see ourselves as old inhabitants of Atlantis that are now wandering through the world to find our own path. So yes, we, we are sailing the seas, we are pirates, as we like to call us and our fans, that comes from the world of Atlantis, uh, that came from the from the world of Atlantis, and that are now searching this world, the actual world, finding something uh, inside us, and finding a place where we belong, where we can tell uh, ourselves we are finally at home. There are plenty of songs that talks about home, the research of home, because basically this is our view of Atlantis. Atlantis was a city where the survivors had no longer a home, a place that they can they can call home, and we are the sailors who are sailing this world, searching for this place. It's also you know uh, there is also a, a deeper concept of course in this in this in this view of the world because everyone is searching for something. I think you agree on this. Someone is searching for richness. Someone is searching for freedom. Some is searching for a better world. Uh, someone is just searching for a reason to be. Somebody is searching for uh, boobs and beer. beer. Someone is searching, yeah, for <laughs> alcohol. Someone is searching for. <laughs> but anyone, every single one of us is searching for for something, and he can only find peace where he finds something. And this is the connection that we are creating between the world of the survivors of Atlantis, the wanderers from Atlantis, and the real life that every one of us is is living. This is also why we call the latest album uh, Wonder. So, yeah, I believe it's a particular concept, uh, but our roots are there. Our roots are based in the fantastic land of Atlantis, but right now it's a completely different thing that comes from there. I think it's fascinating. I don't know how you, how do you feel <laughs> like it. 
Well, actually, actually one, one of our, our not, not the most popular, popular songs, songs, but our one, one of the top, the top five, five is called "And I Shall Find My Home," and it's the it's it's the finale of the opera "The Legacy of Atlantis," and it's about the mage from Atlantis who is actually. Uh, he, managed he managed to escape, escape from, from the from, from the Inquisition, Inquisition and, and he is now off to Britain, Britain uh, trying, trying to find what remain what has, has remained of his home, which was Atlantis. Atlantis. Uh, but, but our view of Atlantis, Atlantis is both, both similar, similar and different. And different although I, you know, you know I, I, I always, always say, say we're not we're preaching anything. anything. You know, I'm, I'm just expressing what I think. For example. So, so everybody, everybody is, of course, course entitled, entitled to their own opinion, opinion but um, as, as I, I said, said, I worked, worked for seven, seven years, years in, well, well I, stu I, stu I studied, studied history, history at university, university for seven, seven years, years, and I can I say that, that um, the, 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 there is such a discipline in history, history which, which is called the studying of historical, historical sources. sources, and historical, historical sources, sources are distinguished, are distinguished by, by different types, types you know? Yeah. And, and actually, actually the, the most, most and, and they, they are, are mostly, mostly distinguished by how reliable they are, you know? Yeah, so, so some, some historical, historical sources are more reliable than others. Than uh, and, and actually, actually the, the most reliable are considered, considered to be material, material sources. sources. Because, because uh, for, for example, if you have a written text, like, I don't know, Bob uh, wrote something right now on a piece of toilet paper, you know, and an archaeologist finds it 1,000 years, and he wrote, I don't know, whatever, this and this politician is a wanker, you know, and um, the archaeologist finds it in 1,000 years from now, and he reads, oh, we have a manuscript here from 1,000 years ago, and this manuscript states, and this, and this is the only source, source we have from, from that civilization. civilization. And this, this manuscript, manuscript says that politician King so-and-so was a complete wanker. And it's in all history books. You know, whereas Bob was just drunk, high on math, you know, sitting on his toilet and hating the world. In reality, this, just to give you an, an, an illustration, you know, for, for, for this reason, are the, the most reliable, reliable sources are actually the ones which, which people, people did not intend, intend to leave. So, so chronicles, chronicles are the least reliable sources, sources because they're always biased, biased you know, yeah. uh, because, because they were they always, always written, written for a reason, reason you know, mostly, mostly to glorify this ruler or that ruler. ruler. But, but if, if somebody, somebody left traces by accident, accident or if he just didn't mean to say anything to the generations, but he just did it for, for, for himself, himself. Like, like, for example, example the best so source on learning the diet, diet of Roman legions is the excavations of their toilets. Because, because when, when you, you analyze, analyze their, their shit, shit, you know exactly what they've, they've been eating, eating but, but the no, nobody, nobody intended this as a chronicle of the, of the Roman, Roman army. army. See? Of course. So, so for, for this reason, reason are uh, the... the uh, the, the most, most reliable, reliable sources, sources in history, history are the sources which are material and which don't, don't have any bias. And, and these, are these are usually things which you dig up, up you know? You know? It's, it's like, like pieces, pieces of crockery, crockery some, some tools, tools instruments, instruments, etc. Et now, now, what, what I don't like, like about official history is that often it goes and directly contradicts itself. For example, it often... Uh, well, well, what, what I, said I said is a theory, theory right? right? But, but in, in practice, practice historians, historians always, when, when they put, put labels, labels on things, they, they always need some text. text. You see, they, they always, always need, need some writing. writing. And, and if, if they, they see some writing in some language, language they, they attribute, attribute that to that, that people and that civilization. civilization. So, so, for example, if I take this cup, you know, and write something in Arabic here, and, and, di and, and, and dig, dig it down, down. And, and somebody, somebody in 1,000 1, years finds it, they will say, okay, we don't know who made this, this cup, but, but it has Arabic writing on it. So the, the only evidence, evidence that we have is that there was an Arabic-Islamic Islamic society, society 
on this territory. That's that's, that's their, their logic. logic. So, so our, um, that's, that's how that's, that's their, their logic. logic. So, so now the, the problem, problem is, is that in in, in reality, reality our, our history, history often um or Mikael, can, 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 can you, you speak, speak something, something please? please? Oh, going on. Uh, okay, okay, great. Right. So, so the, the problem, problem in reality is that in reality they, they often favor written, written sources, sources which are which completely biased and un unreliable according to their, their own principles, principles over our um, physical, physical sor sources, sources which are, are there, there for everybody, everybody to see. I'm slowly approaching the theme of the megaliths, as you might have noticed. So all over the world... We, we have, have huge, huge structures, structures built, built of 100 ton granite. granite. Just, Just to, make to make it clear, clear modern technology, technology cannot do similar things. things. In, In order, order to, to cut, cut granite, granite, you need huge circular, circular soles with, 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 with diamond, diamond coating, coating, huge engines, machines. machines. It's, it's, it's a, a huge, huge thing. thing. And, and even, even to, to lift, lift a 700-ton 700 700 block, block, no, no, mo no, no modern, modern crane can, can do this. And, and these, these things, things, it's not just Egypt, Egypt we're, we're talking about. about. It's, it's not, not just Mexico, Mexico or, or Peru. Peru. It's, it's all, all over, over the world, world including, including Russia, Russia, for example. They have just spotted a huge pyramid in Siberia. They've spotted it from the satellite. You cannot reach it because it's 400 kilometers are through Taiga with, with no roads, with nothing. nothing. It's, it's only, only helicopter, helicopter, you know. Yeah. But, but um, there, 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 there are these huge stone, stone buildings built, built with unknown, unknown technology, technology, you know, without, without any uh, cement, cement in between. between. You, you cannot, cannot put, put a banknote bank in between them, in between, them, in between these, these blocks. blocks. And, and it's, it's everywhere, everywhere and, and the official history just ignores it, you know. They prefer to, to look, look at, at some, some written sources, sources which are completely, completely unreliable, unreliable or just ignore things, things at all. So, so there are findings of airplanes, airplanes made, made from bronze, bronze you know, models, models of airplanes, airplanes are made from, from stone. stone. If, if you, you Google, Google it, it there are carvings of, 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 of astronauts, astronauts and you can, you can see, see that this is an astronaut sitting in a control pit are, which dates from American, American civilization, from Sumerians, uh, from, from Egypt, Egypt etc. There's, there's plenty of evidence. evidence. I mean, a huge amount of evidence. evidence. Just, Just are to, to make, make it in, in proportion, proportion, the first thousand years of the history of Russia, Russia is based on three chronicles. Three chronicles only. Well, 3.5 actually. And all those three chronicles, we know them as, as they, they were rewritten in the 17th, 17th century. century. Think of that. So somebody, somebody rewrote the Chronicles in the 17th, 17th century, which spanned almost 1,000 years of history, history and, and people, people write his, his, his history, history textbooks based, based on that. that. But, but when, when you have, have huge stones, stones all around the world, the world that's, that's not grounds enough, enough to write, write history. history. So, so what we think, we think that Atlantis was not a city. That, that it was, it was not, not a, a um, it, it was, was not, not a country, country but, but it was an entire, entire civilization. civilization. Like, like we, we, we have, have a civilization, civilization now, now, right? Which, which is, is more or less like the Western civilization, which like dominates, dominates the world. So, yeah. our, uh, this uh, Atlantean, Atlantean civilization, civilization which, which had very high technology, technology very advanced science. science. So, so what we we know today as magic, as the occult, is just the remnants of that science. For example, if we travel now to the 14th century and show an iPhone to a medieval knight or to an inquisitor, we would be burned at the fucking stake for witchcraft, you know, because, yeah, because that's the devil's instrument, obviously. What else can it be? So... Um, that's, that's in short our view of Atlantis. So, so when we sing that, we sing of a progenitor civilization, civilization which still has its members here because they, the, idea the idea of reincarnation also comes from Atlantis. Atlantis. They, they found a way to remember their previous incarnations, which, which basically, basically rendered, rendered some of them immortal. immortal. So, so they, they die, they, they 
They are born again, but they remember themselves, like the Dalai Lama in Tibet, for example. So, and that's a technology. So that's what we think of, of Atlantis. Well, I, I believe it's. I, I think it's really fascinating how how many different point of views there can be on, on on a single topic. You know, I, I you know already that I, I agree on on or some stuff, meaning that I, I believe into into some of the things you you've mentioned. At the same time, some I didn't know. I, I mean, history is just like this. It's fascinating. It's just crazy on how many topics you can have different point of views and. Actually, no one can tell this is wrong or this other is wrong because we don't have proof. And this is the amazing side of, of telling tales. And this is also one of the reasons why I believe that most of the people in heavy metal, in, in particular, are, are so connected to tales of coming from different worlds. You know, there are plenty of Viking bands. There are plenty of uh, you know bands that talks about the the ancient Egypt. Uh, there are bands that, that talk about Atlantis, of course. There are talk, bands that talk about these fantasy worlds, uh, medieval stuff, like, for example, Serenity. They are super friends of ours, and each and every single album of Serenity is connected to a specific uh, medieval uh, event or uh, character, like one of the latest albums is called Lionheart, and talks about Richard Lionheart. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's wonderful. Uh, and I think it's also precious because especially nowadays, especially nowadays, I feel and fear that a lot of the historical sites are kind of uh, put apart and put aside by a lot of kids. I don't know if you have the same impact and the same feeling in, 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 in Russia, but here in Italy, there, there are less and less kids that are interested into, into the historical facts and historical events. Because technology is going on, and everyone looks forward, forgetting that to properly look forward, you have to look backwards. And I know, I that, know that, that, that there is, is an Egyptian, Egyptian tablet, tablet dating, dating like 4,000 4, years from, from now, now which, which says, says uh, you know, the youth is completely terrible. terrible. They, they don't, don't want to study anything. anything our, our civilization, civilization is going to end. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that's, uh, you know, it's, it's always how the older generation sees the younger generation. You know. So I think that's an old problem. But speaking about proof, I mean, if you Google, there are, it's all open source information. I mean, there are multiple traces of machinery found on these huge stones all around the world, so it's a, it, it actually has been proven. It's not mainstream, it has not been published for, for, for some reasons, but uh, it is, uh, it's well documented, you know, that there is, you can see that this was some sort of circular saw, that this was melted in some sort, this was, and very straight, Edges, edges because, because archaeologists, archaeologists they are not technologists, technologists but when, when you show, show this, this to people who actually work with stone they say this, this is machinery and this is hand, handiwork and, and in, in egypt, egypt you can, can really see where the boundary is, is because e everything, everything which is made from sandstone and it, and it has, has egyptian, egyptian hieroglyphs on it that's, that's egypt, egypt. Everything, everything that's, that's made from, from huge granite blocks, blocks and it and doesn't, doesn't have any egyptian writings on it there are no writings and it's, and it's absolutely, absolutely geometrically, geometrically ideal. ideal. That's, That's something, something before, before Egypt. Egypt. There, there is, is a book a by French authors, it's called The Dawn of the Magicians. Magicians. And, and it begins, begins with, with a uh, phrase which I really, really like. It says that the distance between the Earth and the Sun is this amount, I don't remember exactly, and it was only found in the 20th century. But in order to find that same number, you know, you, you should, should only, only multiply, multiply are the length of the pyramid of Khufu, which, which actually, actually has nothing, nothing to do with Khufu, uh, by its height. height. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, so they, they already, already knew, knew that back, back then. The question, question is how. how? You know? yeah. and, and there is like, like we're, we're just scratching, scratching the surface, the surface here. here. And, and this, this, this information, information is open, open but it's not, not in the, the textbooks. Text 
crazy. <laughs> and it's called the John, no, the Morning of the Mag Magicians. Yeah. yeah. The book. The yeah. Of the yeah. Yeah. It, it, it also, also ha has, has very, very interesting, interesting things, things like, like, for example, example they, they said, said that, that transmutation, transmutation of elements, elements was, was considered, considered crazy, crazy but, but then, then Mary Curie, Curie came, came along and, and discovered, discovered radiation, radiation, you know, yeah. and, all and all of a sudden, of a sudden mm. <laughs> it's, it's like, like with, with, with the, the UFOs, UFOs these, these days, days they've, they've been, been saying there are no UFOs, UFOs and then they, they silently, silently say, say oh, oh well, well yeah. it's true <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so it's, 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 it's like, 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 like that. that. When, when Copernicus, Copernicus said, said that the earth, earth is round, round everybody, everybody said, you're, you're fucking crazy, crazy we'll burn you at stake. But, but now, but now it's, it's common, common knowledge. knowledge. So, so you, you always, always have to go, go against, against this wave, wave of, of being, being ridiculed, ridiculed when, when you, you find, find out, out something new. Yeah. Yeah. UFOs are my first, you know? <laughs> because because uh, since I was a child, since I remember actually, since I remember I, I started to read, I was always fascinated by the world of UFOs. And at the same time, I am totally scared. I know it's crazy, but basically it is always like this. The thing that you are more fascinated by, it's also the one that scares you the most because it's the unknown usually. And UFOs are totally something that is unknown to us. I was a huge fan of every possible UFO series in the world. And I oh, that means you're also a fan of X-Files. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, and I hated the finale as every, every fan. <laughs> but I remember that back in the days, I was like 10 or 12. My parents showed that I was really fascinated by UFOs, and they bought me a book that definitely was not meant to be read by a kid. <laughs> so they, they did some mistake. And there were uh, these documents, uh, these, you know, altered documents from uh, from the, the secret, uh, secret agencies of the United States and, and, and everything else. And there were pictures, and still right here, when I'm 35 years old, I think of a picture in that book, and I'm still, I, I still get shivers because I still feel the, 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 the vibration of scariness that I felt when I was a kid looking at that picture. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. I still have it. I don't know if I have it here. Maybe it's still at my parents, but I, I have the book somewhere. And uh, so the, the question comes natural. Uh, how do you see uh, the connection between some alien uh, race and Atlantis in your oh, oh, Very and simple. Very Atlantis, Atlantis was, was uh, ahead, ahead of us approximately, approximately by 5,000 5, years in technology. In technology so, so it was a... a it, it was, was not just a global, global civilization, civilization, it was a space-level space civilization. civilization. So, so they, they had, had colonies, colonies in, in outer, outer space. space. And, and our, the, the Atlantean, Atlantean technology, technology was what we would call today biotechnology. That, that was their main... main. So, so they, they were, were not an iron civilization, civilization like, like we are, are but, but they, they were, were a biological civilization, civilization, if you know what I mean. So for example, imagine... That right, right now we have, we have genetic, genetic engineering, engineering, you know, and, and we can, can take, for example, a plant and alter its genes, genes right? right? But imagine, but imagine uh, what, 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 what they, they did. did. They, they did what, what was called the universal, universal cell. cell. So, so you, you take, take a cell, cell and you and program it to grow the way you want it to grow. It to grow. And imagine, imagine you have, have a house, house which, which is completely, completely a living organism. organism. It, it breathes, breathes, you know, it's, it's completely, completely environmentally, environmentally friendly. friendly. It, it supplies you with, with, with fruit, fruit because, because it's like a huge tree, tree you know, yeah. but, but it, it has been programmed. programmed. Or imagine that you have a spaceship, spaceship which was, was built, built in the same, same way, way we, we, which was, was genetically programmed, programmed to grow into, into this super organic, organic structure. structure. And, and our, um, that's, that's how their tech, tech looked like. like. And, and they, they have, have colonies, colonies in outer, outer space, space, and of, and of course, course, I mean, I've just, just read in the news last, last week that finally they admitted that only in the Milky Way, way only in our, our galaxy, galaxy, there is more than 80 billion. billion. 80 billion. billion. Think, Think about, about the number. The number. I, I think, think Jeff Bezos, Bezos has less dollars than that, or approximately the same amount of planets similar to Earth, which are probably inhabitable. Actually. So, so 
that's my talk about aliens. The probability that there are no aliens is kind of zero. The probability that, that there are other aliens is almost 100% because there are so many planets and solar systems which are similar to ours. And, I mean, we, we live at, at an amazing age when it's finally a fact, but again, I mean, somebody is asking here, believe in magic, I'd rather put myself in faith in some of the clouds. Mark, Mark said, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not talking about believe, I'm not, I'm not preaching, I've experienced supernatural things myself, so for, for me it's not a question of belief. But I would say that it's, it's, scientific, it's a scientific approach. You have results and you, you can either replicate them or not. So, so it's, it's not about belief, belief. It's, about it's about knowledge, it's about experiment, it's about, it's about testing, testing, you know, so. so. <laughs> this is something I see a, a bit differently, you know, because you, you said, you used the word that I actually don't like that much. You said supernatural. But what is natural? Good, good point. point. I agree, I actually, actually, yeah, true. Yeah, true. yeah, yeah I, I shouldn't use that word. word. Every, everything is in nature. Any phenomenon is natural. Yeah, I agree. Thousand years ago, lightning were supernatural. Right now, we can explain them. Yeah. Thousand years ago, it was Thor Hammer. You know, uh, Thor Hammer that was hammering uh, the world because he was angry with uh, the Vikings, for example. Or I don't know. It rain was the cry. What were the tears of of, of angels? You know, uh, there are often uh, crazy explanation for events and. The thing is that what we don't know, we try to explain in something that we can make explainable. Not possible, but explainable. Yeah, it's also so a question of language, language. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if we don't know something, we give him, we give him a, 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 different, a different meaning or a different uh, explanation. Uh, right now, we can't explain some stuff. And we used to call them miracles or supernatural stuff. But maybe we just don't have the technology or the acknowledgement in general to understand this kind of things, you know. I, I, I don't say I don't believe at all in, in miracles. I'm just calling them in a different way. I believe that they are just unexplainable things, events that we are not able to describe right now. So I would not call them supernatural because, you know, 10 years ago, antimateria was something impossible. Right now, they are working with antimateria, and they are studying the anti antimateria. So it's it's all a matter of what we know and what we uh, can describe and what we can't describe. I, I don't want to destroy beliefs, faith, or something else. But everything has an explanation that we might not be acknowledged enough to give. That's that's my point of, of view. Sure. My, Two cents about it. I can, I can actually, actually illustrate, illustrate your, your, your point, point about, about antimatter. antimatter. Um, um, in, in magic, magic there is uh, this concept, concept of in yang, yang, you know, yeah. and, and uh, there, uh, is there is this, this concept, concept of the yin, yin universe. universe. So, so the, the, it's, it's in tarot, tarot is it's the third the major, major arcana. arcana. So, so the, the idea, idea is that, that when the Big Bang happened, which is, which is mentioned, mentioned in Kabbalah, Kabbalah by the way, way in, 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 the, in, the, in the Kabbalistic book called Zohar, for, which is dated, is dated from 1,000 to 5,000 5, years ago, depending, depending on how you, you date it, are, they, they already, already mentioned, mentioned the Big Bang, Big Bang in, in there, there. Uh, way, way before, before it was, it was discovered. discovered. So, so, but, but again, um, there, there, is there is this idea, idea that two universes started developing at the same time, but in different directions in time. And, and uh, are in magic, magic this, this is called the, uh, that's, that's a question, question of language, language. you know, you if you, you never, never had have sex, sex and, and you don't, don't know the word orgasm, orgasm, how are you going to describe it? So, there is this universe, which is like the anti-universe, and this concept has been around for ages. And the whole idea was that if you link Somehow, Somehow, these, these two, two universes, universes, any, any matter, matter which goes, goes in between, between would, would be annihilated in, in, in the in middle. middle. Or, or, which, which is called like the Lucifer, Lucifer channel, channel because, because it's, it's, it's illuminates. illuminates. And, and Lucifer, Lucifer is, is the bringer, bringer of light. light. 
and it and also, it also d d destroys, destroys, but that's, but that's a, a, different a different story. story. So, uh, again, again, only, only I, think I think it was, it was last, last year that physics approached this, this concept, and my, my grandfather, grandfather he, he, he was, was a, a professor of physics, and my father was a professor of physics. <laughs> I'm not I'm a physicist, physicist myself, myself, but I've read, read this in the news, that, that they, they approached this, this concept, concept of that, that they, they said, said okay, okay, this universe, universe is, traveling is traveling in this, this dire direction, direction in time, but at the time of the Big Bang, another universe, which is like a a mirror, you know, yeah, a reflection of ours, started developing in the opposite direction. And I look, I look at this, I say, okay, now this has been known for millennia, millennia you know, but it, but it has, has been known in the occult, occult circles. circles, it has been passed, you know, down, down the generations. generations. And, and it's, it's, it's like, like with the transmutation of elements, elements. It's, it's like with dimensions. In the 19th century, they laughed at the mentioning of spirits, but now, F physicists, physicists admit, admit that there, there are 11, 11 dimensions, dimensions officially, officially, you know. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, the, that's, that's the, the, the explanation of spirits. Of spirits. Yeah. I just opened a news that I was looking for because I remember I read it a couple of days ago. This news comes from May the 21st, 2020. So it's like 10 days ago. And it's a news that comes from NASA. So it's not like someone who has no rights to, to tell things. And they said there is a shock discovery. Uh, there is there are proofs of a parallel universe where yeah, time yeah, I read, I read that, that too. Goes, goes reverse. Yeah, and there are proofs in the Antarctic. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, read I read that that, that, that too. too. And I and, and, and I, I was, was just like, like laughing, laughing my ass, ass up. up. I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the concept, the concept of, of parallel, parallel worlds has, has been known since ancient Egypt. Egypt. I mean, I mean anybody, anybody who has who's who's studied who has studied any. Slightly, slightly serious, serious esoteric, esoteric books, books, you know, you know or, or study, study magic, magic or the occult knows, knows about the idea of parallel worlds, world, you, know? you know, but, but only, only now, now, hallelujah, hallelujah Eureka, Eureka, they, they finally, finally admit, admit it. it. Yeah, and I mean, I, I understand this is like something that a couple of years ago, just a couple of years ago, if you told someone, they would tell, they would have told you, you are crazy, you, you just can can. You, 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 your mind is going away, <laughs> you know, you are, you are blown, you have something wrong. And right now it's NASA itself that is telling us that there are proofs for another universe where time goes in reverse. So I, I mean, again, I'm a musician, I'm just a curious guy that likes to read a lot of things, but what I see in this, it's another proof that our minds must be kept open, that we must not believe in everything that is told to us. And Absolutely. It is fantastic that throughout our music you can offer different visions, not only of Atlantis, but of many things. <laughs> and it's nice and great to understand and to see that people are willing to keep their minds open. Because this is what makes every one of us a smart person. If we stay stuck with the uh, official concept and only those concepts without believing in anything else, I believe that we lose something in this life. We lose and everything. It's, 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 the it's the same as the, as the old, old dogma, dogma, you know, you know like, like the, the church, church had believed believe in, in this and nothing, nothing else. else. I, I have, have a fear that, that official science, science is becoming what, what the Catholic, Catholic church, church was back in the 15th, 15th century, century, you know, yeah. that yeah. you either believe, believe in this or you're a heretic. I just think that we must keep our minds open. That's it. That's it. There are, uh, luckily, there are no rules. And uh, as you said uh, many times, we are not preaching. Uh, no one of us is preaching because this is not our job. Our job is to play music. Yeah. yeah. To give emotions. You, you, you I, I, I can explain to everyone why an A note is an A note. <laughs> no, a quarter note lasts one quarter. <laughs> can, you can you explain, explain why, why do we, do we have... have this, this way, way of arranging, arranging music. music. I mean, I mean why, why do we, do we have, have the scale, scale which we have? have. Why, why is A 440 hertz? hertz? Why, why is a semitone exactly this amount, this, amount, this, this difference, difference? You know, you know? Why, why is it, is it not, not a, di a, different a different combination? combination? I could tell you why, but I can also tell you that it's wrong, actually. <laughs> you know, um, uh, there is this 
quite an unknown thing. I mean, it's known for the musicians maybe, but it's not really known to uh, to people that doesn't study music. That uh, the Earth vibes. I mean, you know that everything gives vibration. Vibration. Yeah, yeah, everything. Absolutely. Everything spreads vibration throughout the world. Even light. Yeah, yeah sure. Lights are. Vibration. Absolutely, it's a frequency. It's a sine wave. Yeah. And actually, nature should move around another frequency. The real A should be 432. And it was and changed approximately 100, 100 years, years ago. ago. Exactly. The main reason why music has been uh, tuned to 440 is because of the tuning of the piano. Uh, actually, I don't know the English word for this, but there are several ways that have been used in the past to tune pianos. Um, one is called... Uh, let me let me let me check with Google Translate if there is. Uh, speak, speak in Italian. Italian at least in Russian, Russian we have Italian, Italian terminology. terminology. For example, it's do re mi fa sol la si do. This is the same in Italy, of course, and this is because of a of a chant from uh, Saint Francis. Uh, the original chant was ut re mi fa sol la si do, uh, because it was the beginning of every Latin word was used in this in this uh, chant uh, and every beginning was associated to the note that is actually being played so ut was the do re was the d mi was the e and so on and and because of this the names of the notes went uh, went used in this in, in this way then for a uh, musical reason ut was changed into into do that is also you know deus the d and the d it was a, a good reason for christians to uh, to change the name of Ut. Um, wait a second. If you want to answer to some question in the Yeah, middle. Martin Jacks uh, has two interesting comments. The first one, he said that it looks like the Age of Enlightenment never happened. Well, Martin, I don't know what you know about the Age of Enlightenment, but uh, my best friend, he's a philosopher and a historian by education, and he works as one, and he spent his life studying uh, the works of Ficino, which is a very known Italian Renaissance philosopher, neoplatonist, and magician. And uh, he was not the only guy there, but I can tell you that both the Renaissance uh, and the antique Greek uh, culture was created by occultists, was created by people who were members of different esoteric orders. Uh, for example, Copernicus, it is well known, uh, he is well known for his es esoteric views, and it is well known that Newton, well, that's not Enlightenment, that's much later, but still, it's well known that Newton was a Kabbalist, and it's known that Aristotle and Pythagoras, on whom the age, and Plato, of course, on whom the Enlightenment philosophers based their ideas, they, they were members of the Orphic order. So, just... But, your next comment, I uh, said, I, as I said, it's a free country, I completely agree to you, as I said, I'm not preaching, it's just my opinion, and everybody is entitled to their own, not saying that somebody should... Uh, follow this or follow that. I don't want to be like the media, you know, which right now applies tags to any Facebook post which they don't like and say these are fact check. I think that everybody should be free. It's like, uh, who was it? I think one of the major guys, uh, one of the major guys from the French philosophers I know that he dr drank eight cups of coffee a day. What was his name? Very Make for Visions of Atlantis, because I do the same. Ah, well, you're Italian and you love coffee. I actually love coffee, too. Drink tons of coffee. Uh, I forgot a very fa famous French philosopher. He, he said that I do not agree with you, but I would fight for you for, to have the right to speak your opinion. You know? Ah, it was Voltaire. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a quote from Walter, and I completely roger that. So, I think that right now with this COVID, we we have a problem with the ma with some of the major achievements of the Western civilization, which is like freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and once again we're being told what to think. 
and what to believe and what to do. So yeah, that's somewhere that I completely agree we must have different opinions and I in no way am pretending to be the ultimate truth. Nice. <laughs> so the, the word that I was searching for is equal temperament. That is the uh, way we tune pianos right now. Uh, that creates a mathematical uh, division, a mathematical split of the frequencies to make everything work in the division of the notes in the scale, the musical scale. Because actually, if you think about it, 432 is uh, a number that is uh, dividable for 8. It's a multiple of 8. And the entire nature works with this kind of tuning. So everything should start at 432. But then if you follow the multiples of the scale going up and down in the octaves of, of a piano, so if you start from 432, every octave is the double of the previous one. So an A is 432, the next one mm -hmm. is 864, mm -hmm. and so on. But then if you divide everything, there will be some problems with the tuning. Yep. The, the, the higher one, the higher octave, won't be perfectly in tune with the lower one. So you have to use this equal temperament that changes a bit every note, like shaping a little bit, uh, sliding a bit a little bit on the left and on the right of the tuning to make the division mathematically possible. And so the tuning of a big piano going uh, regular. But um, the problem is that the frequency is 432, being a natural frequency, seem to be a, a relaxing frequency. Meaning that if you listen to music in a 432 uh, tuning, you are not boosted by music, but you are relaxed by music. And there are several scientific studies regarding this thing, this theory, that go back even from, even to the, uh, to the uh, Nazi Germany. They used to uh, make their soldier listen to music tuning 440 to boost the soldiers and make them more aggressive, to uh, create some reactions that were boosted by the music itself. At the same time, right now, there are a lot of uh, uh, meditational musics that you can find also on YouTube and everywhere that are tuned in 432. But at the same time, of course, what science, because it's always a matter of science, discover is that you are more in focus if you listen to something that is a bit unnatural to you. Because your brain gets the musical vibration with a more um, attentive feeling, with a more uh, focused uh, attitude if they are not natural. And you get relaxed if you get the tuning at 432. And this is where the musical system started to develop, especially in the last century, in the last two centuries, actually, uh, getting tuned in 430. But if you go back in time, there are several uh, writings, like, for example, uh, there is this uh, famous Italian musician that is called Giuseppe Verdi. He was used to tune the piano at 435. Or, right now, orchestras, they are tuning 442. And every instrument is adapted to 432, so there is no uh, rule. But to create a standard, because they wanted to create a standard, they decided to define everything at 430. But this should be uh, unnatural to us. I believe that there are bands that are uh, recorded in 432. I think that there are a few bands. From what you said, I missed two things. Thing number one, where did, did the number 432 come from? Again, please, I didn't get it. Science. Science. How, how did they calculate it? The method. They studied the, vibra the vibration coming from light, coming from mm, the, the sounds of the nature, like wind, like birds, and everything else. And it seemed that the, um, I, another time I don't know the word, the, the, the uh, main average, this is a math term, um, that everything mean? moves around 432. Should so dig in, into, into that, that more. more. It's interesting. It's interesting. And, and second, second question, question, why, why if you, you double, double the frequency, frequency all the time, time why, why wouldn't the, the higher, higher octave resonate, resonate with the lower one perfectly? 
Why do you need this temperate clavier? What was the name again? Equal temperament. Yeah. Because if you dig into it and you start multiplying the numbers on and on, and you divide them by 11, because we have 11 frequencies in every scale. You have C, C sharp, B, B sharp, E, F, F sharp, yeah. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, yeah. uh, B, and so on. So it's 11, 12 with the... Well, actually, you have 12, 12 semitones, not 11. Yeah, but the, the 12 is the repetition of the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah true. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you only find that uh, the perfect multiples are on the note where you start from. So let's say you start from 440 and you go to the next one. This is perfectly in, in, uh, in tune. Then you go to the higher one, it's perfectly in tune. But if you divide per 11 every gap of frequency between 432 and 864, let's make it easy. I'll need, need to, to read, read on, on this. this. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that an octave is this space. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think the, the problem, problem is, is dividing, dividing the octave, octave into 11, 11 pieces. pieces. You have to divide it by 11. If you divide this octave, you will reach uh, a frequency for each and every single one, single note in this octave. Okay? Then you go to the next one. This will be the perfect multiple of this, and it will be the perfect multiple of this. But if you split them, you will find that this E won't be the perfect octave of this other E. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the question, question is why? Because this is math. This is not music. Okay, okay let's, let's take, take 11. 11. So, so we, we have, have the, the, the digit, digit 11, 11 right? right? Yep. And, and we times, times it by 2. two. We, we have, have 22. 22. Yes. So we, we have, have 11, 11 here, 11, 11 here. here. Together, Together it's 22. 22. But, yes. they, but, but they are, are both factors, factors of 11, 11 right? right? So, so you can divide them equally. Then you... Ah, but then you... You're, you're not, not multiplying, multiplying 11, 11, you're, you're multiplying, multiplying this, this, which will be 12, 12 and you're multiplying... Yeah, yeah, I see. see. Okay. okay. The problem comes in between. Because this is 11, this is, let's say, 12.6, then you have... No, no, no first, first you have 11, 11 then, then you're multiplying the 12, 12 then you're, you're, mul you're multiplying, multiplying the 13, 13 and it grows and grows and grows, and the higher you go, the bigger the distance. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that to me. Great, great graduates, graduates from the Moscow, Moscow Conservatory, Conservatory could not explain, not explain that to me. That to me. Because, because, okay, okay guys, why do we have 11 notes? notes. Hmm? <laughs> 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 it has, it has always, always been, been like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is, yeah, this is why they... But, but by the way, why 11 notes? Why not, I don't know, 17? Well, this is just a standard for our countries. Yeah, but where, where has it originated from? Actually, Actually, it's seven, seven notes. notes. The, yeah, the, the other, other five, five are, are in between. between. So I might have an answer, but I absolutely don't know if this is true, because what I know is that the first pianos were uh, different from ours, and they didn't have 11 notes. But they have more. They had more. Because they had C, C sharp, and D flat. Then they had D. Then they had yeah, D sharp. I read, I read something, something about, about that. that. Yeah. E flat. But I believe that they simplified things to make everything easier to perform. I believe that this might be the explanation, but of course this is just a theory that I came up with right now. I should dig into it, but I think it was to make things easier. What I know for sure is that like uh, in the Arabian world, in the Indian world, in the Japanese... Yeah, they have, they have all these quarter, quarter tones, tones and everything. And everything. Oh, yeah. everything Crazy scale. It's just a matter of views, you know, because we are used to listen to music like this, and we are acquainted to it. Yeah. yeah. Those who grow in in other in other part of the world, they they just have different different experiences, and for them, we are too simple, probably. So, yeah, yeah, I was, I was th th thinking about that. that. I should. should Sometimes I think maybe I should take some instrument which has no no notes, no keys, like the voice, for example, or or the violin, you know, or a fretless guitar, you know, and you know maybe try composing something out outside of the normal scales, you know, like. But it's 
It's a different different story. story. (laughs) We we would feel it as weird. Yeah, it would be be very very weird. weird. We we, we, we would would probably probably feel feel it as as dissonant. dissonant. Because Because we are used used so much much to these these semitone steps. steps. If you know, to, 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 to half, half step steps, steps, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Half, half past, past 11, 11 here in, in Moscow. Moscow. Yeah, we're a bit, uh, it's half past 10 in here, but it's quite a lot now. We're talking since uh, two hours yeah. and a half. <laughs> what are guys? Our, our guys, guys are, are arguing if magic, magic exists, exists or not. not. Mm. Mm. That's, That's a stupid, stupid thing, thing to argue about. about. <laughs> but this means that the topic was interesting. Are yeah, really sure. sure about it. <laughs> sure, but, but you know, yeah. I, prefer I prefer the scientific, scientific approach. approach. I agree with a guy who says that, that is, we shouldn't put, put the word belief in there. You go and you test it. You know, it either, either works or it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but I said before, I said before, some things are just unexplainable right now. It's yeah. Yeah. this. This messes up everything, you know, because when you can't explain. It becomes a belief then. What you can explain it's something you, sh- you choose to believe in or not then. Yeah. I mean, there have been wars about beliefs <laughs> in the past. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 I think, I think that's, that's the time, time we stopped. It's been two and a half, two and a half hours. hours. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for, joining for joining me here. here. This, this chat, chat will. Pleasure. This, this chat, chat will, 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 will be published, published tonight, tonight for the future, future generations. generations. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and, and ev- ev- everybody, everybody is invited, invited tomorrow, tomorrow to, to join, join our, our singer, singer Jane, Jane and, and the, the singer, singer of Infected Rain, Rain Lana Sister Hands. It will, it be, will an be an Instagram, Instagram because, you know, girls, girls like, like Instagram, Instagram more. <laughs> and, and on, on both, both of their, their web pages, pages uh, uh, they, they will, will go, go live, live. and uh, are please, please remember, remember that, that both versions of Atlantis and Imperial Age, we are we are having some Blu-ray DVD, DVD concert, concert re- releases, releases coming, coming up, up soon, soon so, so stay there. And, and as soon as, soon as this COVID hell is over, over, we hope to see all of you live during concerts, concerts in person. person. Yeah, I mean, I'm so longing for uh, real shows <laughs> and to get back on the road. I, I believe that every musician in the world is, of course, but I really miss it. I really, really miss it. And I, I've seen that a lot of people uh, asked about uh, collaboration between Visions of Atlantis and, and Imperial Age. Actually, we never really talked about it, but we perfectly know about each other and we definitely like each other. So. Let's not exclude anything. We can make promises, of course, but uh, we'll definitely uh, start uh, something from uh, from this live chat because it was really, really nice, oh. and I believe that we are completely, completely open, open to anything. Yeah. When a door opens, it's always wrong. Especially, especially the more crazy an idea is, the better. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you, Alexander. Okay, okay. Mikhail. Okay. Thank you so much. Did you already plan the next the next one apart from Lena, Lena and? Uh, yeah. Lena, by the way, way I'm I seem to be surrounded, surrounded by pe- people, people from, from Italy, Italy. <laughs> yeah, because, because our, our, our next, next chat, chat next Sunday, Sunday I think, think will, will be, be with, with Francesco, Francesco from, from Flash, Flash, Flash God Apocalypse. Apocalypse. <laughs> so, so, so I'm, I'm looking, looking forward, forward to, to that, that one too. too. So, so let's, let's see. see. <laughs> they are an amazing band that. Uh, made their, their, their everything, their growth on their own. And I admire them so much because they started from nothing and they are now headlining everywhere thanks to their own efforts. So they are just a fantastic, fantastic band with a great be. force of will. You will hear wonderful words from them. But by, 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 by the way, look, with, with this, this COVID, COVID, we, we have, have this, this new, new format. format. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have, have imagined, imagined that, that, you know, musicians, musicians from, from different, different bands, bands who either met themselves in person or never would be talking, talking to each other and to the fans directly. So, so something, something good, good is actually, actually happening. happening. Something, something good, good <laughs> you know. <laughs> are, and I hope, I hope that this, this format, format will remain after, after the crisis abates. You know. I, hope I hope that, that it will be. That it will be there for the future.
Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Mikhail. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everybody. And it was, it was really, really cool, cool to see everybody. everybody. We, will we will publish this with, with all the comments. comments. You know, they, 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 they will not be lost. lost. So, so cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.